Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was the legendary successor of the god? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. He was Uzumaki Naruto Uzumaki Naruto was an orphan of the Kyubi attack on Konohagakure no Sado. For five years he lived in the village's orphanage where he was shunned by fellow orphans and caretakers alike and he never knew why. Though today was different it was a day he'd always remember. It was the day the Sandame Hokage would become his adoptive father. What, the blonde-haired boy wearing orange shorts and a red shirt with the Uzumaki swirl on it screamed out standing in front of the greatest and most powerful ninja to have lived. Serutobi Hirazan, yes indeed Naruto-kun from today and out you shall be known as Serutobi Naruto the adoptive son of the Sandame Hokage. He would have done it earlier if it wasn't for the stupid civilians that lead the council that managed to slow Naruto's possession over to the Serutobi clan who had their sights on young Naruto. The caretakers who watched the ordeal could care less because to them it was a blessing having the strongest man in the village in charge of that demon. They were finally free of having to let that child survive, if it were up to them they would have killed that boy themselves if it wasn't for the constant guard of Anbu Black Ops having a whole squadron of Naruto supporters who loved the boy dearly. Gigi. Dot are you sure I mean aren't you the Hokage? The kid asked curiously I mean he was the Hokage he would not have the time he needed to take care of Naruto. Hirazan however did not take long to respond at his new son. I will find the time to teach you many things Naruto-kun and eventually everything even ninjutsu. This made Naruto's eyes bin with starts and happiness as he jumped around screaming random stuff about cool jutsu and badass Hokage. After the paperwork process the duo left together as they walked through the village and into the Serutobi compound where he was met with many greetings from the clansmen making him shocked seeing people actually want to interact with him. The Sandame who noticed this held the boy closer to him making Naruto clutch onto his Hokage robes and hide his head under his Gigi's arm. It's okay Naru-kun they won't hurt you I promise. Look there's a lady who will be designated to feeding and taking care of you while I'm gone her name is Kagane Serutobi. Slowly Naruto poked his head out looking at the middle-aged women standing before him who had a warm sincere smile. It's nice to meet you Naruto-kun I have a fresh pair of clothes and food for you want to come with me? She asked him nicely making sure not to scare the boy off. He nodded surely when he remembered how hungry he was walking away he held the women by her hand as she lead him into the biggest house that belonged to the Sandame. As they walked away fellow elders of the clan approached Hirazan. Are you sure about this Hokage-sama? This will cause a lot of outrage in the council with the Uchiha clan also wanting the boy. Yes indeed in will cause a little chaos but I am his father now and what I say is so and of the Sandame Hokage will be done. Very well then, back with Naruto he had changed his wardrobe after many bickering back and forth because of his need for orange they settled on orange shinobi pants and a black long sleeve jacket with the neat Serutobi clan symbol in armband. He was enjoying his food when the Sandame walked in the house. Hey Gigi. The little boy called out from the kitchen making Serutobi chuckle noticing how quickly Naruto had settled in but it died down quickly when he realized the mountains of paperwork and council meeting that needed to be done. I have to get going Naru-kun I have a very important meeting today tomorrow we will get started in your training, deal? Hi Gigi sensei, giving him a tight hug Naruto ran into his room where books about the history of Konohagakure resides on top of his bed. Getting bored of them quickly however he decided to go to the house's library where he found a book there on a chair. Basics of Bojutsu. Sounds interesting enough, back with Hirazan Serutobi he was seated in the middle of a large council room located in the Hokage Tower. That boy does not deserve to be in a ninja clan. He deserves death. The Uchiha clan wanted him Hokage-sama why do this? Is this a act against my clan? That boy deserves nothing. Silence. The boy, you call him his now my son so act more respectful towards the son of the Sandame Hokage. He will now reside in the Serutobi clan where he will be taught the clan's techniques who knows my elder sons disinterested in the clan I might make Naruto clan leader with approval of Asuma. This caused outrage around the council floors. With Naruto becoming a clan head he would be given unlimited recourses and with that demon siding with the Serutobi they could well become the strongest clan in Konoha leaving the Uchiha clan and Hyuga behind. You still did not answer my question Hokage-sama. Why wasn't I informed of this I wanted Naruto as a son as much as you did, 
The Uchiha clan head Fugaku Uchiha spoke out. He was one of the few who knew everything on Naruto and his past he was a great friend of Minato he wanted to take care of his son. I'm truly sorry Fugaku but I simply wanted Naruto to reside in my clan but with pleasure I'll allow training to be given to him from the Uchiha clan if you want. Ignoring the cries of outrage again of Naruto receiving shinobi training from two major clans went unheard from the two men who simply nodded and smiled at each other who then continued discussing other matters of the village. After the end of the council meeting the three elders of the village council approached Hiruzen. Are you sure it is okay to have Uzumaki in your clan? One asked being careful with their wording making sure not to kiss of the old man. What I say must be done that's what it means when you become Hokage. Are you sure you could pass him on to me? The one to say this was the old warhead Danzo who had wanted to train Naruto into a mindless killing machine for the better of the village. No I will not give him to you not now not ever not if you'll excuse me I have a hyperactive gaki to come deal with he's probably dreaming of some ramen and Ichiraku closes soon. Coming home the sandame took his sweet old time to get home but he noticed something was off. Naruto wasn't home. Where is he? The sandame panicked running around the compound scaring the clansmen who then also started to search for the boy only a select few did not care whether he was lost or not. Arriving at the clan's many training grounds he heard the sound of a bow staff hitting a dummy. Hurrying to the sound of the training he noticed a small figure dressed in all black training uniform smacking the training dummies with a basic stance. It was Naruto, Naruto. The sandame called out shocked. When did the boy take the time to learn this? How and when did he take the weeks to months needed to learn the stance made by himself? When did you learn this Naru-kun? Naruto who had just noticed Hiruzen stopped and smiled. I saw a book on it in the house library and it looked fun so I tried it. My Kami. Naruto do you realize what you just did? Dot you just learned the basics of Bojutsu in the matter of hours. This was crazy all by itself it Naruto truly learned the basics in a matter of hours he would be a prodigy like no other. The young blonde Serutobi would become a force to be reckoned with at an early age and perhaps bring his clan to greatness. Huh. Is that bad, the blonde had tears coming down his eyes when he flinched seeing the Hokage come closer only for the cage to hug Naruto close and light laughter and smiled emerged behind him showing a couple of clansmen who had joined the pursuit to find him. No Naru-kun you did amazing in fact this will be our first lesson. I will teach you to become the art of the bow staff as a first. Yes Naruto you too will one day have the honorary title as the god of shinobi. It had been three years since Naruto joined the Serutobi clan. In this time span he was forced to learn the basics and only the basics having learned the Kiwarimi number justu, body replacement technique, and Henge number justu, transformation justu, having mastered both techniques you their full extent with the young boy being able to replace himself without the puff of smoke and with the Henge he was also able to change and mask his own chakra. He had also spent a lot of time on Taijutsu having learned the Serutobi clan's Taijutsu. Along with weapons training he had a high lever of Bojutsu. But with ninjutsu he was barely starting having barely learned of his water element he spent minimal time learning water exercises until the old man finally taught him something. Today was supposed to be a taijutsu day but with Hiruzen being pulled into a meeting Naruto was left with the sensei or better yet senseis he despised the most. Uchiha Itachi and Uchiha Shisui they never taught him anything truth be told. All they went on was rambling about the will of fire and their philosophies on the village as a whole. As a kid he despised it but made sure to always pay attention to anything they said they were his sensei after all. You know what let's actually teach this Serutobi kid something. Naruto beamed into life hearing those words. Nicely and quickly he leaned closer to hear the lecture. Itachi spoke next clearing his throat to shift the attention of the blonde. What do you know of Genjutsu Naruto-kun? Um, Dot not much I know however I will never be able to do it since my large chakra reserves impede me from being able to cast them. No it's not impossible. If you were to have Junin level control over your chakra you would be able to cast them quite effectively but currently you don't. So what we will be teaching you today is how to dispel them. Shisui who butted it spoke next, in order to do this my young student you will need to send chakra through your body disputing the illusion that was casted onto you. With your rather large reserves this will be easy and without much trouble just don't put out too. He was cut off when a wave of chakra bursted through the private training grounds making the land shake around them until Naruto stopped looking at them carelessly. Did I do it? Damn it you brat. 
Shisui enraged was about to give his student a lecture when Itachi cut in chuckling making the both gasp. The Uchiha brooder is laughing Naruto this is a code red IREPAR code red run for your life NARUTO -O 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 -O. And the mood his ruined thank you Shisui Dobi. Itachi smiled once again at the shocked look of Shisui at his new name. Shisui sensei is paying for ramen again? Indeed he is Naruto kun indeed he is. Hey. After his meal Naruto made his way towards the Serutobi clan compound where he would be meeting up with Hiruzen for a lecture on elemental ninjutsu. It was a hard and touchy subject since Naruto was barely entering the academy this week and elemental manipulation was a chunin level skill and a 8 year old boy knowing of this kind of stuff is almost unheard of. Hey my boy come here for a second I have something for you. The Sandame reached out to the boy passing him on two scrolls. Opening both scrolls Naruto took a look inside where in both resided names of Jutsu. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Style, Fireball Jutsu. Sweden. Mizurapa, Water Style, Wild Water Wave, what? Yes Naruto I will be teaching you 2C rank Jutsu. Since your main element is water I chose this and for when there is no clear water source I prepared this C rank Fire Jutsu. 11 If you do not hold a fire element yet the fire jutsu should be viable enough for now until you train on it more and gain another element. Naruto to say the least was shocked at this, he would learn not one but two techniques and for different elements. This was a high chunin type of skill that he would have and should he succeed nobody in his age group would be able to beat him in battle. The sandame on his part knew the boy was ready for this, he had been training the boy for this after all. After months of training regarding chakra exercises Naruto could already walk on water meaning he was ready for elemental manipulation, and when he did the boy excelled in it. Naruto was set to have two strong elements by the time he became a genin and it made Hiruzen proud at Naruto's progress throughout his training regiment. After a couple of weeks Naruto had the fire technique down to a lesser extent. Since he hadn't had a fire element to begin with the fireball was not as big as said Uchiha Itachi but he had it down where he could effectively use it in battle twice. The water technique wild water wave was coming down very nicely, when he had a large source of water Naruto would create a huge waterfall of water sent to a target. Depending on the amount of chakra input he had on the technique he could very well turn the jutsu into a B rank if he used as much chakra as possible creating an incomprehensible amount of water enough to turn the whole training ground into a lake of strong currents that even the sandame had trouble saving himself. Today however would be different, it was his first day at the ninja academy. Common Gigi what do you mean you won't teach me anything anymore? Yes Naru kun you will be learning from the academy instructors and sometimes Itachi and Shisui. Why though? Aren't I gonna fall back on my skills? Naruto. You have to understand you are 8 years old and the skills you have is enough to proclaim you chunin. You need to be with people your age and work on teamwork since I have no doubt you'll graduate early don't expect to be there too long if that helps. Only for you Gigi. Only for you, Naruto changing into his clothes and carrying his wooden bow staff on his back he walked towards the academy eventually reaching the front gate. Reaching to the front desk Naruto held a small note to the room number where his class would be. A uh, miss can you tell me where room 10 is? Down the first hall till the end honorable son. That name is never going away huh? Naruto had earned the name ever since he was adopted by the Sandame. He always hated the name since it made him caged in the shadow of Hiruzen. Even after Hiruzen talked to the boy about it he still hated anyone who called him that. Alright. Naruto responded dryly walking down the hall into the room where he was met with two boys brawling it out. Quickly stepping in Naruto took out his bow staff and in a set of moves he held one boy up by his clothes with his staff and the other on the floor pinned down with his knee. What's going on here? The blonde asked, damn you get off me I am a Uchiha. An elite. Let me go blondie let me show this punk who's the alpha here. Listening to their bickering Naruto side and at a complex set of hand seals he touched both of them paralyzing their bodies shocking them, he however let them speak freely with only their bodies unable to move. Will you stop now if do you want to stay like this the whole day? The young Serutobi hummed happily causing the two of them to scoff. HN, fine. Letting go of them and the seals he introduced himself as Serutobi Naruto. The now introduced, Alpha, was a boy named Inazaka Kiba and his dog partner Akamaru. He was clueless as to who Naruto was, all he knew is that he was outclassed. The now apparent Uhiha elite was Uchiha Sasuke, Itachi's younger brother. He indeed knew who Naruto was since his brother was his sensei, 
he despised Naruto for taking time away from his brother since he didn't deserve the time of his elder brother. The whole class getting away from their shock pushed them aside since the instructor came in making everyone take a seat. My name is Amino Uruka and I will be the lead instructor for this year's class. My name is Mizuki and I will be the assistant instructor for this class. They went on to introduce the students to rules and regulations regarding the academy and how it worked. It was a four-year course that led simple students to become genin of Konoha. Naruto who paid no mind only listened to the introductions of the fellow students, he had in mind who he would hang out with. Inazaka Kiba was a choice with his clan specializing in tracking the boy could benefit from having the dog boy around. Uchiha Sasuke could say that he was the closest rival with the Uchiha being a strong clan with their dojutsu the Sharingan but if it came down to a real battle Naruto could probably even take on the instructors and win. Abarame Shino with a clan specializing in bugs was a quiet fellow but Naruto admired it, after all the greatest tool of a shinobi is deception. Nara Shikamaru was sleeping and paying no attention to the instructors. His clan was the brains of Konohagakure and Naruto knew this, Shika was way more than he led on to be. Akamichi Choji was enjoying some chips trying to wake up his friend Shika. His clan was the strength of Konoha having special techniques involving pure strength. He would be a formidable opponent in the future. And that was all for Naruto, he ignored a pair of clear white eyes that followed his every movement behind him. That was Hyuga Hanada the heiress of the most arrogant yet mighty clan of Konoha. She however was timid and quiet and she admired Naruto with everything she had since he had saved her from some bullied back in the day. Naruto knew this but ignored her thinking she had forgotten the ordeal but it was the opposite. She had used the event to fuel her need to become stronger and gain the attention of Naruto so one day she could stand in as his equal on the battlefield. Yes this proved to become a wonderful four years of nothing but learning. It was a cold night, a full moon. Sasuke and Naruto made their way to the Uchiha compound where Naruto was supposed to be at for his training according to Sasuke who had approached him unexpectedly during class. Hey Dobi we're almost there, got it Teme. Wait Sasuke something is off. What do you mean? Be quiet and follow me. Naruto took out his bow staff and silently closed in on the gates that had no guards. And there they were handing from a tree with their necks tied with ninja wire. What the hell Naruto what is going? He was cut off by Naruto who had shushed him. Walking inside were countless dead bodies, babies and elders alike. Both academy students were shocked at this. Sasuke loosing his cool ran home leaving Naruto to investigate what had happened, from what appeared to be they had been slashed in the neck giving them a quick death but the question remained. Who did this, a ghhhhh? Hearing the scream from Sasuke Naruto made his way quickly into an alley and saw Sasuke knocked out and standing in front of him Uchiha Itachi. Please for the love of Kami please tell me you didn't kill everyone Itachi Sensei. I am sorry Naruto kun but yes I killed off my clan and I killed Shisui. Naruto stood there not moving at all. Flashbacks of him eating and playing with Shisui and Itachi rang through his mind as if he was relieving his final moments on earth and that he wanted. He wanted to die too. This wasn't real it couldn't be. Itachi Sensei you know what I must do. The young Serutobi brought his bow staff up in a defensive position, his eyes dead blue glaring at Itachi with the full intention of killing him or end up killed himself. Do you truly wish to fight me Naruto-kun? It is what I must do as your student. To test mount strength once and for all. In a blur of speed both Itachi's ninjutu clashed with Naruto's chakra-induced metal bow staff given to him by Shisui. Glaring at each other Itachi's eyes morphed into his three Tomo Sharingan. Getting scared Naruto jumped away as he started to feel weak in his legs facing the Uchiha. He truly loved you Naruto-kun, that did it for Naruto. Itachi had no right to talk about the man he saw as a brother, he had to kill Itachi. Don't you dare speak of him. Putting his bow staff away Naruto took out two kanai holding them in a reverse grip he launched towards Itachi as fast as he could. Clashing one of his kanai with the ninja to Naruto tried to swipe Itachi with the other one but was met with a heel to the neck sending him crashing to the wall. You are no match for me Naruto-kun. Dot you don't have enough hate. Clashing blades once again Naruto began to lose his cool going for a sloppy swipe at Itachi causing him to lose his balance. Itachi tried for take advantage of it but Naruto managed to substitute himself with a trash can. Then in a split second Naruto threw shuriken at Itachi performing the necessary hand signs for a jutsu. Shuriken cage bunshin no jutsu, shuriken shadow clone technique. 
What appeared to be four shuriken turned into forty as they cut through Itachi Naruto's side in relief but something was off. Itachi wasn't bleeding instead crows came out of his body showing the young Serutobi to be in a genjutsu. Kai, Naruto used as much chakra as he could and dispelled the genjutsu, and their Itachi was with she red eyes glowing in the darkness of the alley. You've been under my genjutsu ever since you threw the shuriken. Face it you are no match for me. I may not be but if there's a way I wish to die it's to die fighting with you Itachi sensei. Nothing brings me more pride than this. Taking out his bow staff Naruto began to move towards Itachi. With each swipe of jab Itachi managed to evade every single one until he took a clean cut at Naruto on his leg making him fall on one knee but Naruto instead of screaming or crying he grinned. The young boy going against a cage level ninja grinned. Seems this is where we switch to ninjutsu. Naruto going over hand signs Itachi copied them both screaming at the same time. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu, fire style, fireball jutsu. Clashing the fireballs at each other they fought for dominance this time with Naruto's superior chakra reserves he managed to outlast Itachi making him use a last ditch move narrowly evading the fireball. I have stamina over you sensei but that alone isn't enough you have the superior arsenal. Indeed Naruto kun indeed, running at each other Naruto went to swipe Itachi's feet but Itachi jumped over it and in an acrobatic move he split his legs kicking Naruto who put his arms in a X to lessen the effects of the strong kick. Running back at Itachi Naruto dodged a jab and went for his own and put his fist up to Itachi's face making him spit out a little blood. Seems you're getting tired sensei, not a chance. They bickered back and forth while evading each other's jabs and kicks at each other but Itachi being AFR superior went for Naruto's gut placing his knee there making the blonde grunt out and fly away. Naruto struggling to stand up started coughing up blood finally letting out teardrops of pain both physically and mentally from fighting his sensei in a deathmatch. Please sensei. Don't leave me, Naruto cried out slowly closing his eyes. The last thing he saw was Itachi letting out tears before he passed out due to internal bleeding. One day Naruto we will fight and you will win that time I can feel it. Waking up Naruto saw a white ceiling eventually realizing he was in a hospital he tried to get up quickly but felt a tug and noticed. He was under restraining straps. It's okay Naru kun I'm here, Gigi. Why am I in these straps? The shinobi and civilian council alike voted to keep you restrained and chakra blocked until you give us the details on the Uchiha massacre where you were found passed out. Uchiha Itachi has been declared the perpetrator but you being his student and being in the area caused commotion and those claiming you partook in the massacre. Gigi. I saw everything. I saw Itachi and the reasons for my injuries were because I fought him and prayed he killed me. The Sandame was caught off guard by this. Naruto had fought Itachi and wished he killed him? What exactly had happened? He kept his questions for later because Naruto continued. He told me he killed his clan along with Shisui. At that moment I took my bow staff and fought him, we engaged in a battle of weapons until he cut me. Then we fought in a short ninjutsu battle with me as the victor and finally a taijutsu brawl with me succumbing to my internal injuries. The Sandame took a while to process everything he was about to speak but Naruto himself wasn't finished. I hoped he would kill me. I prayed that sensei would kill me so I would not have to live in a world where one of my sensei is dead and the other a mass murderer. I prayed that I would live peacefully next to Shisui but I was wrong that bastard spared me. The Sandame. Noticing the rice of anger in Naruto slapped him square in the cheek causing the boy to look at him in shock. You shouldn't say those things Naru kun remember you still have me your weak old man. He smiled at Naruto finally making the blonde lose it all as he cried loudly finally losing the restraining straps he cried hugging Hiruzen. I'm sorry Gigi. I wasn't strong enough to fight Itachi, please forgive me. It's okay Naru kun go to sleep we'll continue tomorrow. Leaving the room he stood in front of the council who were waiting and listening to it all. The shinobi side had many in tears listening to the blonde's encounter with his senseis while the civilian side had some who cared most didn't. That settles it. Serutobi Naruto is declared free of all pending charges. Nara Shikaku the Jonin commander and top advisor claimed getting claps from the shinobi and scoffs from the civilians who wanted that boy dead. To believe a academy student fought Itachi with such bravery. Truly a ninja that only comes once a generation, Inochi spoke out much to the agreement of many. What will be of the boy now Serutobi? Asked Choza. I will keep training him as I've had until he graduates the academy a year early like I have planned. 
Very well I accept your judgment professor, he finally did it. Serutobi Naruto was finally a genin. He worked his ass off and finally he managed to graduate a year early from his class. It all started after the massacre when Naruto had approached Sasuke. The details of Naruto and Sasuke's involvement in the massacre was no secret to the village and news of Naruto fighting bravely against the Uchiha prodigy and managed to gain the respect he long sought after. His only problem was always having to deal with the elite, Sasuke. After finding out of Naruto's early graduation Sasuke always pressured Naruto into sparring with him saying he deserved to kill Itachi and not him. But did Naruto truly wish to kill his rogue sensei? Truth was he didn't know. But one thing he did know was he needed to get strong and fast. Naruto managed to get Hiruzen to give him jutsu and new techniques every month with the young boy now being considered a low junin level ninja he wouldn't be surprised if he rose through the ranks quickly. Damn it why can't I get this jutsu down? Naruto cursed out trying to use a jutsu given to him the Kaiden. Ryuka no justu, fire style, dragon fire technique. This technique was on where the user would spit out a large stream of fire like a dragon thus its name. Dropping to the ground Naruto was panting being tired from all the times he tried to do the technique when the sandame and a tall strange man walked next to his old man. Hello Naru kun how's the technique going? It s gg but it'll get it done soon. Anyways, who's this? The man going over a complex seal of hand signs Naruto didn't recognize managed to summon a large toad and while he stood on top the large man with the long white hair spoke. I am the man where women flock to. I am the strongest Sanin the toad sage Jiraiya. The sandame sighed pulling out his pipe he took a nice big puff. Naruto did as my student Jiraiya he will be your sensei from now on. What Naruto cried out. He wanted to be taught by the shinobi no kami not some pervert with toads as summons. Yes indeed Naruto. I am your new sensei the strongest ninja in the village. I'd say my old man can send you flying away in less than a second but we can go with the second strongest if your battles are true. I've heard of you, the toad sage who's done over a thousand dangerous missions and is the main man when it comes to intelligence so I am guessing a introduction on my part is futile. That is true Naruto, I know everything about you. Serutobi Naruto Genin of Konoha, has fire and water elements. Has Junin level weapon skills and Chunin level Taijutsu as well as no talent in Genjutsu but can dispel them. Barely started Fuinjutsu and seems to be a prodigy with many skills said to have to rival his age. Naruto stayed quiet for a minute, could he actually learn from the Sanin? He was lacking in infiltration and assassination so he could learn a thing or two from Jiraiya and hope his perverted tendencies wouldn't rub of on him. Very well Aero Senen what will we be doing then? Jiraiya face faulted at his new nickname and Hiruzen chuckled at the fitting nickname his adoptive son had given Jiraiya. Deciding to leave the two alone Hiruzen walked back home to work on his calligraphy and sip on some tea. Don't call me Dagaki. Anyways you forget about those stupid D rank missions. We will be traveling the elemental nations and working on my spy network. Yes I will show you what it means to be the apprentice of Asanin. Pack your bags we're going to be gone for at least two months. Hi Aero Senen, damn it Gaki. The duo of student and teacher made their way outside of Konoha following a narrow dirt path through the woods. So Aero Senen what are all these missions about? Well for starters no missions in my organization are lower than B rank missions. We focus on infiltration and intel gathering with assassination being the smallest part or missions I do. What are we doing? Hunting for information on a rogue nin. Uchiha Itachi. Naruto stopped as his legs began to feel weak remembering the battle he had with his rogue sensei. Jiraiya noticing this put his arm on his shoulder trying to calm the blonde down. Naruto I trust you will remain composed. There will be many things taught will be uncovered to you in my organization so I want you to stay clam or ill ship you back home where you'll do D ranks. Hi sensei I understand. They continued walking down the path eventually reaching a valley-like place surrounded by mountains it made both Naruto and Jiraiya's skin crawl noticing the bad situation they would be in if they were to be attacked right now. Stay sharp Naruto I have a bad feeling about this. You do too huh? Naruto whispered out as they crept through the now dark night. Both teacher and student stayed close to each other to avoid being lost and soon they heard small voices coming from north or their direction. Jiraiya signaling to go to the voices they stopped and their wide eyes met each other then they realized who was not too far from them. 
Uchiha Itachi and his partner Hoshigaki Kisame neither of them uttered a word they simply watched as the duo in red clouds small talked back and forth until they stopped. Seems we have unexpected company, shit Naruto being the lesser infiltration specialist had been caught so the sensei doing what he should do jumped in front of Itachi. We meet again Itachi, Jiraiya the Sanin it's nice to have meet again but you're not the one who we caught so how about you come on out. Well too late to run now. Come on out Naruto. Jiraiya spoke out making Itachi narrow his eyes and not a second later there stood Naruto dressed in all black combat uniform holding his bow staff in his defensive position. Well 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 seems the Kayubi came out and wants to play, Kisame said making Naruto gasp. What do you mean Kayubi? Both Jiraiya and Itachi were caught off guard both looking at Kisame wondering what he would do next. Seems you don't know Gaki but you have the Kayubi in you and were the Akatsuki and our mission is to hunt you down. Naruto dropped his bow staff as he began to shake, Kayubi? I'm the Kayubi? I scg guess I really am a demon then, indeed you are, Itachi spoke out causing Naruto to grip his heart in pain hearing such words from his rogue sensei. His heart crushed he began to feel adrenaline like no other as his body began to envelop in red sinister chakra causing the earth to shake. Naruto calmed down. No damn you all. Naruto now with enhanced strength and speed, eyes blood red. The young Serutobi had enough he wanted to kill Uchiha Itachi. Launching himself at Itachi he tackled him sending both of them crashing into a mountainside. Bring it sensei. Naruto grinned his teeth growing fangs as he looked full with bloodlust at Itachi who had activated his three Tomo Sharingan. Let's see how much you've grown. Demon, A-G-H-H-H-H-H, Naruto in blinding speeds clashed his elbow with with Itachi's. Ducking from a swipe to his face Naruto clashed his knee into Itachi making the Uchiha gasp for air. A deja vu isn't it sensei? The young Serutobi prepared some hand signs while Itachi copied his movements both launched their attack. Kaden. Ryuka no Jutsu, Fire Style, Dragon Fire Technique. The large streams of fire collided and while this was going on Itachi's eyes began to shift into a three-pointed shuriken. Amaterasu. Itachi's stream of fire began to turn black completely overwhelming Naruto who substituted himself with a log the last second narrowly avoiding death. What is that? Take my power. What? Take my power. Naruto's expression began to change into a foxy grin as he got on all fours. His red aura began to grow three tails. Naruto, Jiraiya tried to end the fight but was stopped when the famed Samaheda sword stopped his path. This is a fight between teacher and student don't but in and I want fight you. Damn it Naruto why do you do this and how the hell did you manage to pull three tails? Back with Naruto he started screaming but with his enhanced appearance it turned into a roar of chakra that devastated anything in its path. Itachi seeing this was shocked as his body was pushed away, not a second later arm of red chakra launched towards Itachi narrowly missing him. It was Naruto, his tails had turned into usable arms. Kaden. Hosenka no Jutsu, Fire Style, Phoenix Sage Fire Technique. Itachi launched multiple fireballs at Naruto who started running on all fours at him while evading the small fireballs coming towards him. Dai Uchiha. The voice within Naruto screamed but it wasn't Naruto no it was the Kayubi who had taken over Naruto. But he had no intentions of doing this forever he simply wanted all Uchiha dead and finish them once and for all. Nice to meet you great Kayubi no Yoko. You will die today Uchiha and this boy. Dot his hatred is strong he'll be glad I finished his job. The Kayubi stopped talking and jumped back to turn into another form as Naruto's skin began to peel off showing a creature with four tails swinging like crazy. Seems this is as far as I can go. The Kayubi mused out chuckling as it began to gather a black ball of chakra from its. Bijudama. Tailed beast ball. The ball of chakra launched at Itachi who began to run away from the upcoming blast. The blast itself was bright white and decimated the mountain behind him. Damn it Naruto. Amaterasu. The black flames engulfed Naruto who began to scream muffled between his own voice and the Kayubi who started to lose control over the body until Naruto's body was back to normal but with burn marks along both his arms and half his face. Itachi who was panting holding his right eye that began to bleed called out Kisame and they took off running leaving Jiraiya to run to Naruto who was close to unconsciousness. Are you okay Naruto? I I don't know sensei everything hurts. Like if I suddenly got slammed into a wall then thrown into a fire, quite a day is my first day as a ninja. 
slowly closing his eyes Naruto succumbed to his injuries going unconscious. How am I going to explain this to Hiruzen Sensei? Naruto's mindscape there stood Naruto in front of the strongest tailed beast the Kyubi. Hello Nine Tails, your hatred, it's strong. I am willing to make a deal regarding my power. What will that be? Kill Uchiha Itachi and I will supply you unmanageably power beyond your mortal comprehension. Deal, one day boy your hatred will get the best of you and I, I will take over your body, the Kyubi chuckled internally. There stood Serutobi Naruto with his right eye under eye patch and his whole right side filled with red vein like burn marks but he had a mission to complete. For the remainder of the mission Naruto wore tight black shinobi pants and a black jacket. Over it both he had leather straps around his chest and legs supporting his bow staff that was in his back on a holster. His hair grew into long straight hair making him need to tie it back into a manban, not to mention his Konoha headband was long lost. It had been a little over a week since Naruto's encounter with Itachi where he rested for two whole days and woke up with the burning sensation of the scars in the eye patch covering his useless right eye that was blood red. Jiraiya had told him that the increased seal tampering that had went on in the fight was the cause of his eye and the burns were from Itachi. Today they were asking around for information. The whole time was pure small talk with Jiraiya not daring to speak about the Kaiubi and Naruto simply tired of everything and questioning his entire existence. Naruto you're going to need to talk eventually, nah that we can talk back in the village with the old bastard present I want to know his input before anything you have to say that evidently won't do shit. Jiraiya stayed quiet for a second till he thought of an idea to take Naruto's thought away from everything. I was actually planning on teaching you a rank technique, wanna see it? This piqued Naruto's interest who looked at Jiraiya who put his palm up, slowly a blue orb the size of a small ball appeared on him. Jiraiya ran at a tree and screamed, Rasengan. The technique slowly cut through the tree until a huge explosion caused the tree to disperse into pieces of bark. Naruto coming back to life a little grinned watching the cool technique the pervert was going to teach him but went back to his emo look when Jiraiya handed him a water balloon. The first phase is to explode it using only your chakra manipulation. Hi hi. Let's go. Datbeo. Naruto had just succeeded both the water balloon exercise and the rubber ball exercise in two weeks. Great Naruto now all that is left is completing the actual Rasengan into your palm. This will be the hardest part but by the time we get back to Konoha I have no doubt you'll have it down. Thank you sensei. Damn Gaki you only call me sensei when I actually teach you something why do you respect Itachi but not me? Jiraiya screamed not realizing what he had just said and expecting the worse he quivered away from Naruto but he just remained passive. Because he was like a brother to me, same with Shisui sensei. They both taught me to protect the village is to do it without recognition of others, to be a shadow and nothing more. To be Hokage was not to become acknowledged but to already have the acknowledgments of everyone. Not only that but they drilled the basics into me and thanks to that I was able to graduate early and work on a top spy network so I say they taught me right dead or rogue. I see. Well that just means I am going to have to teach you even better to gain your respect Gaki. You already have. The duo made their way to the front gates signing in the civilians and ninja alike looked at Naruto with shocked and scared faces looking at his burn marks that were apparent on his face as well as his eye patch. Arriving at the front door of the Hokage's office Jiraiya told Naruto to wait outside. And after a little while a scream was heard from inside the office. You what, Naruto decided as was time to walk in now in full display of the Hokage who looked at the boy with sadness. It wasn't every day you fight Itachi Uchiha once but to do it twice is suicide. How are you my boy? I want answers, about the Kaiubi I presume. That and more. W-H-O. R. My. Real. Parents, the Sandame dropped his pipe he was holding from the shock going through his body. Not once in the years of Naruto living with him did Naruto ask about his heritage but to do it now he had no idea what to do. Sensei call away your Anbu. The Anbu taking the signal to leave listened and a barrier of privacy was made around them appearing light blue around them like a protective dome. It's time we tell you the truth Naruto-kun, I am listening. Your mother was Kashina Uzumaki and your father was the Yandaimi Minato Namikaze. Naruto dropped to the ground gasping as a single tear of blood went down his right eye behind his eye patch. Why you knew all this? The Kaiubi, my parents and you still holded this? I was needed to protect you from the arms of your father's enemies, 
If word spread out of your heritage you would be hunted by every single hidden village seeking either to kill you or take you to join their own forces. This time Jiraiya was the one who spoke out. Naruto sighed and reached into his adoptive father's desk reaching out for a pack of cigarettes. Taking out a lighter with it Naruto lighted one and began to smoke facing towards the view of the village. As your father I should say no to this but the stress is so apparent ill let it pass for now. Naruto putting the cigarette on his right hand putting it away from his spoke, my whole life has been a s rank mission. From being excluded from all social activities and being isolated from everyone to having my senseis going rogue and the other dying. I had to fight the remaining one to the death twice and both times he spared me. Now I have the Akatsuki after me and with my heritage revealed I am at loss to what pursue, he mused out chuckling taking a puff of his cancer stick and revealing his blood red eye to the sandame. I can do something about that eye, explain, the Kiri civil war is over and to commemorate the new alliance Mei the new Mizukage gave us her Byakugan eye that was in her forces since the third shinobi world war. The council was indecisive on who to pass on the bloodline to and I have decided, Naruto the dojutsu will be passed on to you for payment for your brave actions against s rank criminal Uchiha Itachi, the Sandame said making Jiraiya and Naruto to scream out in confusion. Hiruzen pulling out a scroll gave it to Naruto as well as a secret location where this would be happening. Are you sure about this Gigi? Receiving such a prestigious dojutsu like the Byakugan was a gift sent from heaven. With such a dojutsu Naruto could become the strongest ninja to have come out of his generation by a landslide. He would be unstoppable in taijutsu and well as spying and infiltration with no trouble. Yes my boy besides I can't bear to see my son with such a cursed eye. Jiraiya getting over his shock led Naruto away to the location where top Konoha medics awaited his arrival. After the surgery Naruto was handed a new eye patch with specific seals to hide his eye from the Byakugan itself and other dojutsu. He also received a new headband and placed it around his neck not wanting to ruin his look. Deciding to meet his adoptive father first he had many thoughts ringing through his mind. What would he do now? Would he follow his real father's footsteps of his adoptive father's? If he followed Hiruzen's path Naruto would focus on his elemental ninjutsu and eventually gain an affinity for all the elements. If he followed the Yandaimi he would try and learn the Hiraishin and become unstoppable in close combat. Putting his thought he walked inside and was met with the Hokage and the village elders. He was thrown a chunin vest making him look at Hiruzen with the elders behind him with confusion. Genin Serutobi Naruto for gaining information on Konoha's top criminal Uchiha Itachi I hereby make you chunin on a field promotion. What indeed Naruto san you deserve it. I expect great things from you. The man with half his body wrapped in bandages spoke out and the other two elders giving him a respectful bow and they all walked out of the room leaving son and father alone. Are you sure about this Gigi I mean I am barely 15. Hitaki Kakashi was made chunin at 6 Naru kun age in the shinobi life is but a number. But strength, strength is the true measure of one's ability to lead. I am also giving you this, a B rank fire jutsu is a gift for your promotion. Stand tall Chunin Serutobi Naruto and make me proud. Hi Hokage sama, you're not gonna put the vest on? Nay I like my LL black look besides vest like these cause too much attention with missions outside of Konoha. By the way Naruto you already have 2s rank missions under your belt so you are going to have to take a month off from duty. Naruto walked away the office towards his training ground where he would train. Back in the office a janin dropped his transparency jutsu. Can you see the way he looked at my direction? He already was using his eye and tracked me in a matter of seconds within walking into the room, he's good Hokage sama. Indeed that's why when he gets back in active duty he will be placed within your squad. I accept I mean I don't want to pass the chance to teach sensei's son but isn't Jiraiya already his sensei? Yes he is but I don't want Naruto joining in on the missions anymore so he will only teach the boy a few days a month while you remain his main sensei. Hi Hokage sama. Impress me and see what you can do with my son Janin Hitaki Kakashi. Kaden. Karyu Enden. Fire style, fire dragon flame technique. The boy launched a large stream of fire at the white haired Janin who replaced himself with a log to avoid the burning flames. Appearing in a brust of speed, the Janin clashed his kanai with the Chunin's bow staff. The Chunin was Serutobi Naruto and he was sparring Hitaki Kakashi who had approached him for a friendly sparring match. Bring it Hitaki. 
Naruto directly activating his Byakugan could tell that there was another Kakashi behind the tree line so throwing a kanai with an explosive tag at the target the explosion caused the Kakashi in front of him to puff in smoke and the on in the tree line to engage Naruto. God I hate shadow clones. Naruto mused out twirling his bow staff and engaging Kakashi in a battle of weapons. Swinging his staff at the Jonin's leg Naruto fainted kicking Kakashi and instead used his staff as a support to turn 180 degrees and hit Kakashi using his fist towards the Jonin's chin but once it hit, Kakashi, exploded into lightning causing Naruto to scream in pain. You must always see the underneath from the underneath Naruto. That's what your father taught me after all. So you were his student huh? Guess I have a lot to learn from you, but this fight is far from over Kakashi-san. Oh am I still up for a fight? Putting his bow staff back in his back Naruto's hands began to glow while he performed a single hand sign. Sweden. Mizurapa. Water style, wild water wave. A huge waterfall of water emerged from our blonde Chunin towards Kakashi who had shocked eyes at the enormous amounts of water. Putting his arms in the ground he called out. Doden. Doryuheki. Earth style. Mud wall, a 15-foot wall of earth emerged from the ground stopping the water from going any further, but the water was stronger than Hitaki had thought as the water started cracking the wall. Deciding it was better to retreat Kakashi used a shunshin and appeared in a swirl of leaves a couple of feet next to Naruto who had two kanai in a reverse grip. Let's go. Hi, clashing their blades the training ground resonated of metal clashing for a couple of minutes. Each strike with the intent to disabilitate the opponent. Naruto who had finally pinto entered Kakashi's chakra points put his kanai away and went to engage with bare arms. Quickly in a burst of speed Naruto did precision hits with his palms against Kakashi's chest making him gasp for air while taking a knee. Why you know the gentle fist? No I simply found your points and laced my palms with chakra, then hit them rendering them useless. Yes it's a gentle fist technique but you could say I did it my own way. Seems I need to get serious then. Kakashi lifted up his headband making Naruto gasp. There it was a three tomo Sharingan. Flashbacks emerged within Naruto fighting Itachi and being completely overrun, could Kakashi stomp him too? I see, Naruto lifted up his eye patch showing the white eye dojutsu called the Byakugan. Naruto couldn't see it because Kakashi had a mask but he was grinning, this was proving to be a great sparring match. They gazed into each other, each having a single special eye that made Konoha what it was, a king of bloodlines. Running at each other in Jonin level speeds Kakashi tired to punch Naruto in the neck but Naruto ducked from it and used his bow staff and put in on the ground, using this Naruto launched forward heel first hitting Kakashi in his gut making him grunt. You're too unpredictable. My Sharingan is having a hard time tracking you, and as for a clone maneuver you can see everything. Indeed but your Sharingan is superior to my all-seeing eye, you're pulling back hits. Bring it on then, honorable son, that does it. Naruto going over a set of hand seals Kakashi copied him both screaming out. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu, fire style, great fireball jutsu. The huge fireballs clashed as they fought for dominance, what Naruto didn't know was that he had stopped paying attention to his surroundings as he felt a sharp pain in his ribs. Naruto had just been kicked away from a shadow clone. Naruto flew away to a tree completely destroying it. I am going to have to use my last move, Naruto began to charge chakra into his palm creating a Rasengan making Kakashi gasp seeing his sensei's jutsu in action but he too knew the technique as he created his own making Naruto gasp as well. They ran at each other in blinding speed, Rasengan. The both screamed clashing their Rasengans into each other until a few moments after an explosion was caused making dust and rocks fly everywhere. Once it all cleared Kakashi was standing tall and fine and Naruto was on the ground grunting out in pain. The young Satorbi putting up a sign of loss put his eye patch back and Kakashi covered his Sharingan both panting after the long spar. You'll easily make a rank soon Naruto. I have no doubt you'll become the strongest in the village. Thank you Kakashi-san but what is the true meaning of coming for a sparring match? So you paid attention to the small details huh, always do. Very well. I alongside you will be taking on two genin and becoming a four-man cell. I wanted to spar against you and see your current skill level to see who you are going to teach and it said, you're going to teach the special case of Uchiha Sasuke. What not the emo, what do you mean Naruto? The reports say he's a top ninja with no rival kinda like Yoi. That's bullshit. 
that is a straight emotional hazard that wants to kill Itachi no matter how and that's dangerous Kakashi-san even I know my limits when it comes to Itachi. I see. Well what you do with her is none of my concern now let's go to the Hokage Tower and see the other Junin sensei. Alright fine, Naruto and Kakashi wailed alongside each other towards the Hokage Tower. What piqued Kakashi's interest was that Naruto had taken out a cigarette and began to smoke. Does the Sandame and Asuma know of this? Asuma? I know who he is but never seen him, he and the old man don't have a good relationship you see. Probably got tired of living in the shadow of the old man. Indeed I did, a voice called out showing a man in standard Jonin attire and a stash of the twelve ninja guardian. Hello Asuma, both Naruto and Kakashi called out greeting him. Never saw you as a smoker Naruto, Asuma said, may you get stressed when you have to fight to the death couple of times a week. Asuma and Naruto began to smoke together while walking towards the office with Kakashi long gone who had started started blabbering on about a stupid book and ill meet you there. How's life treating you? Oto Uto. It s I lost my ing I fighting s rank criminals and everyone looks at me differently because of my new look. They probably think I am a ing hazard with the Kyubi in me and everything. Seems you know now. Wanna have a smoke and drinks together after this? Sure thing. Walking in the office Naruto and Asuma stood in front of the Jonin sensei who had already been assigned their teams. You're late, called out the Sandame sitting in his chair smoking on his pipe. Sorry old man, Naruto and Asuma said in unison taking a puff from their cigarette causing the Jonin around them to chuckle seeing the similarities between them even though they weren't even blood related brothers. Asuma you will be getting Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Choji and Nara Shikamaru. Hi Hokage Sama. Naruto Yu and Kakashi will be getting Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke and Sai. Hi Hokage Sama, walking outside the tower Asuma greeted Naruto, still up for a drink. I am and I guess, both Naruto and Asuma made their way to the small bar that was strictly for military personnel and sat down next to each other both asking for some cheap sake. What do you plan on doing in the future Otuto? I don't know probably become Hokage but first I have my sights on something even greater, to defeat the Akatsuki. I've heard of them, they're after you I don't like it. Neither do I but if I wish to truly become Hokage I need to defeat Itachi and the Akatsuki. That is the only way I can truly live in peace with myself. Was it tough? Dot the fight with Itachi, Naruto stayed quiet for a moment only gazing into his drink blocking out everything else he began to reminisce of his battles with Itachi. Being completely curbed stomped the first time and the second gaining permanent injuries and losing eye, Itachi was truly something. I, I never expected him to be that strong. He's in a completely different league than me and I didn't realize that till I gained these marks and lost my eye. I don't know how but one day I am going to kill him so he can finally be at peace with Shisui Sensei. You speak very highly of him considering the criminal he is. Ninja respect power and Itachi is no exception to the sheer power he represents. I'll catch you later I have to check out something. Naruto paying for his drinks left the bar and Asuma. Quickly going discreetly he used his newly acquired transparency technique and chakra suppression technique and leapt through the buildings until reaching a building where a man named Danzo stood talking to his Anbu. Now what are you hiding Danzo, Naruto thought watching the interaction from a small crack in the ceiling. The old man always seemed to make Naruto shiver as if he was hiding something from everyone and Naruto made it his plan to figure it out. I wonder what could be under his bandages I know that not many people will see this but I want the opinion of the readers. Should I have Naruto figure out more secrets of Konoha like Danzo's bandages, or should I keep it for later? One month later, how can this Dobi be my sensei? I'm not calling Naruto sensei I'd rather die. I can make that happen, huh? Mama Naruto calm down we don't want to kill our genin so soon, Kakashi stopped the escalation well knowing Naruto would kill Sasuke. Uh Naruto sensei why do you like you've been in a war? Asked Sai. Because I am in one, I wasn't aware the village was in a war? Not the village but me, huh? That's enough Naruto, Kakashi stopped his chunin again. Kakashi instructed his new genin to sit down in front of Naruto and himself so they could introduce themselves. My name is Hitaki Kakashi, my likes and dislikes are none of your business as for my dreams I have none. Naruto go next. My name is Serutobi Naruto, my likes include training and eating ramen with the old man and my dislikes include you guys. My dreams include becoming a S ranked ninja and killing a couple of people on my hit list. Am I on the list Naruto-sama? 
You will be Sai if you call me that again now go next. My name is Sai. That's all, alright that was excellent introduction Sai. Pinky next. Naruto Baka. Naruto flared a bit of killer intent making a dark orange aura around him making everyone gasp even the normally stoic Kakashi. Don't question my words or orders Haruno go next. Why yeah am my name is Haruno Sakura and my likes are. My dislikes are Ino and my dreams are. She stopped however and began to look at Sasuke with starts in her eyes imagining her whole life with him in that split minute. Naruto sighed and let Kakashi continue as he began to read over a scroll with a new jutsu given to him by the old man Hiruzen. Alright Emo go next, Kakashi said to him not lifting his eyes from his book. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. My likes are none and I dislike a lot of things, my dream for the future is to restore my clan and kill a certain man. Sasuke spoke never taking his eyes of Naruto. He wondered what had happened to Naruto for him to lose his eye and gain all those marks, he hoped it didn't have to do with Itachi. Stupid brooder. Naruto muttered under his breath only for Kakashi to HEA and sigh at his partner teacher scare the living shit out of the students. Today we will be doing the actual genin test. Naruto spoke out randomly making the genin scream. What do you mean real test? Sasuke and Sakura screamed while Sai looked indifferent. Kakashi and Naruto shunshin away letting the team know to meet them at training ground 7 in less than an hour. Arriving at the ground team 7 looked at their sensei where one was smoking while the other read a book. Don't smoke in front of me Naruto Baka. Is that a order towards your superior? Naruto screamed out giving her a dead stare with his single eye. NOS sensei, good. Now the test is simple, Kakashi will be tied to a stump and you guys have to get him before the sun goes down so about a couple of hours. Good now disperse. Naruto walked back standing on the stump where a clone of Kakashi was tied to a stump. Using his Byakugan Naruto had noticed all three genin were way too far apart from each other, so maybe why not mess with the fangirl Kunoichi first. Going towards Sakura he placed a trap where he had put an illusion of Sasuke tied to a tree. Sakura herself walked through the woods till she reached a figure tied to a tree. S Sakura help me, Sasuke-kun. Running to him she felt a wire and in a split second she herself was tied with ninja wire making her gasp. Noticing someone coming out the figure walked from the shadows showing Naruto laughing out loud. Mama Sakura-chan if you truly pass this which I doubt you will I will shape you into something you'll fear, Naruto chuckled out leaving her struggling to untie herself and gasp at the comment Naruto made. Maybe she could beg the Sandame to make her switch teams. Naruto making his way back to the clone of Kakashi had noticed that Sai was still in his hiding place near Kakashi. Why wouldn't he go for Kakashi? What was his plan? Taking one more step forward Naruto saw what appeared to be two black and white tigers approach him full speed, using a substitution Naruto replaced himself with a log and hid in the tree line while using his all-seeing eye to see what Sai was up to. Sai had been drawing and making animals out of nowhere, it intrigued Naruto how one could create ninjutsu like that. In a blur of speed Naruto appeared behind Sai holding a kanai to his neck. What is this? Ninjutsu I created Naruto sensei. Sai put his arms up and smiled creepily before exploding in ink but Naruto knew the real Sai was behind him so in a blink of an eye Naruto clashed his bow staff with the upcoming Tonto that was hosted on Sai's back. Don't underestimate me Sai. I may be a chunin but my skill is that almost equal to Kakashi-san. Hi sensei. Sai going for a predictable slash to Naruto's arm was cut off when at a set of movements Naruto held his arm behind him putting him in an inescapable spot. You need more practice with that blade Sai, don't worry I am sure Kakashi-san will be of help, Naruto said chopping Sai on the neck knocking him out. Now all that was left was the Uchiha walking back with Sai and Sakura Naruto tied them both up next to Kakashi and then smirked when he realized Sasuke was in front of him now. It'll give him some leverage and deactivate my eye, Sasuke let's see how you fare against me. HMPHIM not like those two Naruto, Sasuke responded not adding the dobi since he rather not enrage Naruto while fighting him, he wanted to fight just not die. Exactly you're nothing compared to the other two nice to see you understand. Sasuke riled up and ran in a sloppy position making Naruto give a foxy grin noticing he accomplished in riling the last loyal Uchiha up. Sasuke ran at Naruto trying to knee him in the gut but was blocked by Naruto's arm that held it, a split second later Naruto picked up Sasuke by the leg he was holding and threw him away making him fall and roll away a couple of feet. 
Is that all you have? Damn you, Katen. Gokaku no jutsu, fire style, fireball jutsu. Sasuke launched a decently sized fireball making Naruto raise his interest at Sasuke, he had no idea Sasuke also possessed a fire affinity. Putting up his hand Naruto's pal began to glow and then suddenly a barrier of water appeared around the blonde protecting him from the fireball. Sasuke grunted noticing the dobi had a clear mastery over water. Seems the Uchiha isn't all that. You're nothing compared to true shinobi our age, and here I thought you were different. Damn you Naruto, Sasuke running as fast as he could raised his leg going for a kick to Naruto's head but was blocked by the blonde's elbow. Going for another kick to Naruto's chest it was blocked by Naruto's other hand and was pushed away sending Sasuke skidding away. Rushing in blinding speed Naruto performed a successful blockage of Sasuke's chakra points making him gasp and spit out a little blood as well as putting him to sleep seconds later. Picking him he carried him and left him next to his two tied teammates. A couple of minutes later of Naruto just reading waiting for his students to wake up. Groggily waking up Team 7 looked around gasping at the fact that two of them were tied and Sasuke had his hands tied. You failed. What, you can't do that, even Sai the normally emotionless teen was wide-eyed at the fact that they had failed their test. Naruto handing them one lunchbox began to speak. You will have one more try. Sasuke will be the only one to eat. Leaving Naruto went to Kakashi who was hiding behind the tree line. They ing but let's see if they even show a remote understanding of teamwork. Era era Naruto do you really have such low faith in teamwork? Kakashi said pointing at Sasuke who was feeding Sakura and Sai telling them they needed to work together if they wished to beat the Dobi. Well ill be damned. Suddenly appearing in front of them the Chunin led of a huge wave of killer intent making the Genin gasp and freeze. You all. Pass, what? Yes the true purpose of the test was teamwork. You see my gracious genin those who break the rules are scum that's true but those who leave their comrades to die are worse than scum. Kakashi added coming from a random bush. Walking away from the team Naruto let Kakashi debrief the new team. Pulling out a new cigarette he began to wonder if he could train Sakura into a true kunoichi, maybe assassination? Naruto sensei. Hearing the screaming Naruto slowly turned around seeing Sakura standing in front of him panting. Pathetic. Please Naruto sensei train me, she screamed bowing down to Naruto to show respect. Hum. Naruto questioned rather she would be trainable or not so why not give her a little test. Giving her a couple of scrolls on Kenjutsu he began to speak. Sakura go to a shinobi store and buy a nice tanto or ninjutsu you like and use these scrolls to train yourself. If you can last 5 minutes against me in weapons I'll not only train you but you'll become my apprentice and you'll get to go on cool missions. Hi sensei, running away Sakura felt relieved as she reached a ninja shop where old man stood. Ten ten we have a customer come greet her, yes father. Welcome to our ninja shop looking for anything in particular? My sensei told me to look for a tanto or ninja to of my choice, do you have anything in pink? Pink huh? Tenten walked behind her shop and grabbed what Sakura thought was the most beautiful thing she had ever seen. A ninjutsu with a black holster and handle, the blade itself was black and was forged with the most prominent chakra induced metal according to Tenten. Ill take it. Back with Naruto who was standing in the Hokage's office telling his adoptive father on the team's situation with Kakashi. Are you sure Naruto? Taking on an apprentice won't be easy for you including the fact that you are still a chunin. Yes if she indeed passes my little test I will take her on, yes my rank in low but my skill is enough for the junin not to question whether or not I have the right to take a student so early. Yes this Haruno Sakura would become a very strong kunoichi, one that will shake Konoha and the elemental nations. So what do y'all think? Going in a good direction or no? Any suggestions or criticism I'll take them here just don't be too mean. It seems Naruto-kun has gained a Byakugan eye. It must be dealt with then. I did have a present for him after all. A pair of three Tomo Sharingan eyes flashed through the dark night as he got closer and closer towards Konohagakure. Ready Sakura. Hi Sensei. Sakura rushed straight forward with her blade making a basic slash at her teacher's knee only for her to lose her balance and trip close to him. It's okay Sakura just keep trying. Don't think about anybody else just think about your blade and your target, clear your mind. Sorry. Don't apologize for that, just attack, Naruto in a burst or speed clashed a kanai with Sakura who was holding her blade in a horizontal position over her chest. 
Naruto slowly added more strength into her making her fight for dominance but surely she was losing ground with now being 1-1 one -one knee fighting for her life. Can I really do this? Sakura's face saddened as she began to doubt herself. Naruto who had noticed this stopped putting pressure on her and told her to put her blade away. Why do you want to become my apprentice Sakura? B because I want to be strong. No don't tell me that bullshit. Why do you want to become strong? I. It was because of Sasuke. I asked him out on a date and he turned me down like always but this time it was different, he told me how I am weak and shouldn't even be considered a kunoichi. But then I met you sensei, a boy so close to our age and yet a chunin with skills on par with junin. I want to be your apprentice to prove Sasuke wrong, I wish to become strong. Naruto finally giving Sakura the resolve she desperately needed he smiled at her. Great job Sakura for having such a great motivator but this fight is far from over. Sakura smiled again as she tied her long pink hair into a ponytail and unsheathed her ninjutsu, as did Naruto taking out a kunai. Show me your true potential. Rushing in high genin speed Sakura clashed her blade with Naruto. Performing a quick kawarimi to avoid Naruto's blade she appeared from behind a large boulder and jumped upwards going for the strongest attack she could do. Swinging her blade towards Naruto he gasped when instead of going for a swing she put her foot first going for a strong kick to Naruto who out his arms out in AX to block the kick. The kick was the strongest Naruto had ever seen in a genin, he was so surprised that he forgot to notice Sakura going for his leg. Quickly the chunin jumped over the kunoichi and kicked her back making her fall. I am not done yet sensei. Jumping up she performed a 180 degree turn eventually kicking Naruto in the head with her heel. Luckily for Naruto he had his arm raised and had blocked it but he had to admit her strength was unexpected. Eventually Naruto decided to test her defense so he used the academy taijutsu stance to go easy on her. Going for a basic punch to her stomach Sakura had blocked it using one hat and the other to his face. She blocked and countered my attack. This girl is far from weak, Naruto thought narrowly moving his head to avoid the punch. Cha. Sakura screamed out putting her elbow in Naruto's gut making him gasp for air, in a quick set of movements she tried kicking him in the same area but was blocked with one of Naruto's arms as the other one grabbed her leg and slammed her down on the ground making her scream in pain. This girl. She did all this in two weeks. Sakura that's it. Tell me why did you stop using your blade? Because two weeks of practice by myself is not enough to match your skill. I see well your taijutsu is impressive. You took the academy keita and used it on your own accord adding your immense strength to it. As for your blade we still have a lot to work on. We? Wait. You're accepting me. Hi Haruno Sakura you are now my apprentice. But we will still work with team 7 on missions but when it comes to training you that will be up to me. Thank you sensei. Sakura bowed down to show respect to her teacher making Naruto chuckle in embarrassment. Get up Sakura and take this, Naruto handed her a scroll with the Uzumaki symbol making her look at the scroll and scan in confusion. It's your new style. The Uzumaki style the dance of were pools. Uzumaki. So it was actually a clan all along. Hi it was. As you know I am actually from Uzumaki decent myself, we were a clan on par with the Senju and Uchiha but fell during the third great shinobi world war. This dance incorporates strength and chakra manipulation to amazing degree so much that the style is the was the most feared thing from our clan. We will focus on the strength part for now but soon you will master the dance. T thank you sensei. Sakura had a single tear roll down her eye making Naruto soften up at his student. Common Sakura let's go get you better ninja gear ill pay. Hi sensei. Walking out of the ninja store Sakura had gotten new gear. She had on black kunoichi tights and a pink jacket with black stripes along the sides, she had also gotten a new black satchel for her ninjutsu making her look very strong. This is only the beginning Sakura. I will train you every day till you drop this training will be hell but you will become stronger than even Sasuke in no time. Thank you so much, Sakura smiled at her sensei before running away happily to show her family her new gear. So ready to come out, Naruto mused out, she's strong. I know Kakashi-san that's exactly why I took her in, it'll shape her into something that hasn't been seen in the Kunoichi scene since Tsunade Senju. Why are you so sure? Because she has goals far greater than even mine. And that is, to become the strongest Kunoichi to come from Konohagakure. Walking back to the Serutobi compound Naruto made his way through the illuminated night as he began to look at the full moon wondering. 
I wonder what Itachi Sensei is doing. So you see me. The rumors are true, then you do have the Byakugan. Hello. Itachi Sensei, a tall man with long black hair dressed in all back robe with red clouds, got closer and closer to Naruto. Activating his eyes, Itachi began to speak. I am here to destroy your troublesome eye, in blinding speeds Itachi met his kanai with Naruto's staff both gazing into each other. Lifting his eye patch, Naruto revealed his all-seeing eye the Byakugan. Do you want my eye? Come and get it. Kayubi wake up I might need some chakra here. Just make sure you kill him this time you brat. The voice ringed in Naruto's mind as his body enveloped in a dark orange aura. Calling upon the beast chakra so early. I am right to call you a demon. Shut up. Naruto ran and with a straightforward punch he phased right through Itachi and not a second later crows began to disperse and flight around him. Kai, releasing the genjutsu Naruto began to panic not finding Itachi. Was it all illusion? Was he losing his insanity? I am still here, a voice called behind Naruto and in a split second he was kicked into a huge boulder making him cry out in pain. Aw damn you sensei. Naruto coughed up blood getting into his taijutsu stance. Rushing at Itachi he put his palm forward and began to scream. Hake Kusho. 8 trigrams vacuum palm. The technique hit its target as Itachi grunted in pain and fell into a kneeling position as he slowly tried to get up he smirked. It was unexpected that you would know the Hyuga's techniques. I am impressed Naruto-kun, but that alone is not enough to defeat me. Wind began to gust around the duo and crows filed the area and suddenly a single crow with a glimpse of a Sharingan rammed into Naruto entering his body through Naruto's. I leave my final present to you and may we meet in battle once again. At least that would have been what Shisui would have said. Don't you, the Serutobi began to cough wondering what had happened and when he looked up Itachi was no longer there. W was the whole fight a simple illusion or was Itachi Enover here? Suddenly the world turned pitch black as a gravitational pull pulled Naruto into the Kayubi cage where the beast made of pure hatred met the boy. We have to talk, what is it you stupid fox, that brat? The Kayubi pointed at a new separate cage where a single crow stood, what intrigued Naruto was the red glowing eye. Walking closer Naruto froze as he saw that the bird had a three tomo Sharingan. D did Itachi sensei just give me a Sharingan? Indeed but as you know my hatred grows strong for those beasts. So if you decide to transplant it our deal is over and I will no longer supply you with chakra for battles. I see well then it's off limits for now, walking away from the cage and his mindscape the blonde made his way back home as he reminisced his old times with Itachi and Shisui. Could it be? No that isn't possible right? Flashback? Naruto I want to show you something come here, hi Shisui sensei. Shisui wasting no time activated his Sharingan but what was shocking is that it began to spin becoming a weird square shape with sharp edges. This Naruto is the Mangekio Sharingan, my ultimate and secret eye. W what C can it do? I have two special techniques reserved only to me. One his Koto Amatsumaki Koto, it gives me the ability to control someone's mind without them even realizing it but it has a one year cool down period. My second technique is the Kamui. I have the ability to phase through things but I have a feeling that is the tip of the iceberg for it. W wow. Indeed Naruto this is a secret not known by anyone but the Hakahe and Itachi, I pass it on to you because I trust one day you'll need the information I am giving you. What does he mean by that? Flashback over, and no it can't be. Running back into his mind scape ignoring the sleeping tailed beast he now faced the crow with tears in his eyes as they dripped down he softly spoke. Crow San show me the Mangekio Sharingan, the Sharingan in the crow began to shift making Naruto drip even more tears as it shifted into Shisui's eye. T that bastard gave me Shisui's secret eye, what will I do now, Naruto dropped on both knees and let the crow's eyes convert back to three tomo. The blonde simply laid there on both knees with nothing on his mind besides Shisui. Naruto are you sure that team 7 can handle them? Old man Sakura is a low chunin level ninja and Sasuke along with Sai can handle themselves. Team 7 smiled happily seeing their usually dangerous sensei praising them for once, Kakashi remained silent just reading his smut like always. The sandame on his part sighed, fine Anbu, send Tazuna in. Quickly the door behind them opened showing old man wearing ragged clothes and holding a large cheap sake bottle he probably got from the market. He scanned the team in front of him and scoffed making Naruto narrow his eyes waiting for the comment. 
Is this group of kids supposed to be my bodyguards? I hired ninja not a couple of children playing ninja. That does it, Naruto tried hitting Tazuna but was held back by Kakashi who sighed at Naruto's childishness. The boy could be such a badass in battle but had the personality of his old genin partner Obito. Grunting away his anger Naruto changed his whole attitude to Sarunas's making Tazuna look at the boy in confusion, was the boy simply stupid? Debriefing his team on the mission's details Naruto and Kakashi told their team to meet at the front gate in two hours as they all dispersed except for Naruto. He's hiding something, I know but I trust you, by the way how is that Haruno girl doing? Well old man it's been a month since I began to train her and she's become a low chunin level ninja with great mastery over her ninja too. Excellent work now leave I need to catch up on reading. The old man pulled out his smut making Naruto sigh in defeat as he began to ask his old man the unthinkable. Pass me one, hi hi. The old man paid no attention to Naruto just threw him the orange cover book. Make out paradise huh, using his water shunshun he now stood on top of the Hokage monument opening the book. What the foo, alright let's get going, Naruto boredly said to the team ignoring them with his eyes glued down to the book he was given. I see you too are a man of culture, shut up Hitaki or I'll kill you. You know you can't do that. I am stronger than you, he whispered in Naruto's ear making him turn towards him with a smug look. Is that a challenge? It is, in a flash both Naruto and Kakashi clashed elbows holding their ground for a minute until they both disappeared again. Bring it, Naruto took out two kanai in reverse grip while Kakashi pulled out one. Staring into each other for a minute they then suddenly jumped into action with a quick blur of motion. They kept fighting in front of their students who were gasping and shocked at the scene who could only see flashed and kanai clashing. W what is this? Tazuna screamed out scared never had seen such a high skill fight in his life. Way to go Naruto sensei. HN stupid dobi, excellent show of force Naruto sama kakashi sama. The fight was put to a stop on front of them however when in a huge dust of dust it showed that kakashi had a kanai to Naruto's neck. Sighing Naruto called defeat. Damn it that's 5 to 2 I need to get stronger. Don't worry Naruto that's why I am here, whatever let's get going. It had been a couple of hours since they had departed from the village. Sakura and Naruto were going over her kenjutsu which infuriated Sasuke. Why would someone as weak as Sakura carry around a blade like she could use it? Such a weakling deserves nothing. Tazuna had stayed very quiet on his part and that had raised some alarms for Kakashi and Naruto. Why would a drunk old man who liked to babble on his suddenly becomes quiet once they left the village? Something was off and it had to be bad. They continued walking down a dirt path when Kakashi and his chunin noted the puddle in the middle of the road ahead of them. Once they stood over it they were both suddenly wrapped around chains and with no time to react they were cut into pieces. Sensei. Sakura cried out seeing their teachers die right in front of her when suddenly two men came from the bushes. Even Sasuke was shocked that Naruto and Kakashi had died just like that but now isn't the time to grief. You're dead. Sakura. Sai and Sasuke burst into action with Sakura and Sai going for one while Sasuke went for the other. They clashed their kanai with the men's chains, once Sakura was ready to pull her ninja to two blurs appeared in front of them quickly dispatching and knocking the assailants unconscious. Are you okay? Sensei how, Sakura practically gleamed with happiness when she turned and saw two logs in the place where Naruto and Kakashi had died. Hi Naruto Sensei Kakashi Sensei, Sai and Sakura responded while Sasuke just grunted. Quickly everyone stood in front of the two tied ninja with Kakashi thinking on what to do with them. And what should we do with them Naruto? Who are they Sensei? They are the demon brothers of Kirigakure, C rank missing ninja. You came a voice from the two tied men while they both glared at Naruto and Kakashi. A thought quickly came on Naruto's mind. How did they know he was also a Sensei? How do you know me? Of course me we do. Kakashi of the Sharingan and Naruto the god's successor. Both a rank ninja on the bingo book. What Sharingan? Sasuke became infuriated just knowing the fact that Kakashi had a Sharingan ignoring Naruto's name caring less about the blonde idiot. This is going to be a long story, I still hate you. Shut it Teme. Came the voice of Sakura growing tired of Sasuke excluding his hate for Kakashi and Naruto. Wanna go at it weakling? Bring it emo. Quickly Naruto and Kakashi restrained their students signing at their situation. 
Put Sasuke on a leash Kakashi-san or my student might end up killing him. Hi hi. Kakashi waved off Naruto taking Sasuke away leaving Naruto and Sakura alone giving Naruto the perfect time to lecture her. Sakura. Yes sensei. You need to learn to control your temper. Here have this, Naruto said passing her a small scroll. What is this? A new technique we're going to learn. You will learn to create chakra-induced punch that will even put Senju Tsunade to shame. Really cool, shut up, sorry. Walking back to the team they walked for a little while longer they continued until they were a mere mile of the land of waves which was their designated location for their client. It's a setup. Get down. Everyone jumped down narrowly avoiding a large sword that had cut and stuck itself into a nearby tree, and on top of it a large man that Kakashi and Naruto knew well that he was huge trouble. Sabuza Momochi a rank missing ninja of Kirigakure. It seems my reputation precedes me but so does yours. Kakashi of the Sharingan a man known to have learned over a thousand techniques, and Naruto the god's successor the adoptive son and student of the third Hokage. The man jumped down with his large sword making Naruto and Kakashi flinch, this was a battle to the death. They were used to it of course but the genin? Not so much. Genin stay back me and Naruto will deal with him he's out of your league this isn't the demon brothers anymore. We'll have to hit him with everything we have. Kakashi lifted up his headband showing his three Tomo Sharingan as did Naruto revealing his Byakugan, it wasn't needed for Naruto but he thought he'd look cool if he copied Kakashi. Ho. I was aware of the Sharingan but the Byakugan. Very interesting indeed, Sabuza chuckled out raising his hand into a single hand seal. Kirigakir number Jutsu, Ninja Art, Hidden Mist Jutsu. The air started to become dense until it became a dense fog made out of chakra. Damn it my Byakugan can't track him in this fog. Naruto whispered out to Kakashi who nodded. You may be able to handle yourselves. But your genin can't, Sabuza screamed out suddenly landing in between the triangle formation that had formed from the genin to protect Tazuna. Trying to cleave of the head of the genin he was met with a single black and pink ninja to and a genin smirking. You're mistaken if you can take me on so easily Sabuza-san. Sakura whispered out once again clashing her blade this time protecting her legs from a swipe from Sabuza. This infuriated him, how could a mere genin match him? However the SW Rodsman failed to remember the other two a rank ninja near him, in a blood of speed Naruto's heel met Sabuza's sword who had barely managed to block the kick but not without taking a huge amount of force and skidding away. Great job Sakura now leave this to us, Naruto called out as a red shroud of sinister chakra started surrounding Naruto. His bloodlust met Sabuza who was wide eyed at the amount of evil and malice that was contained in the chakra. This also had shocked the genin but Kakashi cut in standing next to Naruto. Are you sure about this Naruto, hi, let's show him not to mess without students then. Running in amazing speeds Naruto brought up his bow staff clashing it with Sabaza's large blade who had a single hand sign, Mizu Bunshin no Jutsu, water clone technique. Five clones emerged from the ground next to Sabuza and engaged in combat with Kakashi. While he was busy the missing nin had to deal with the other problem. Naruto. My eye it sees it all. I can even see that little fake hunter nin. Naruto screamed out making Sabuza look at him in shock when Naruto threw a kanai at the tree line. With a burst of speed a small person with large hair and a kiri hunter nin mask appeared next to Sabuza. Nothing can hide from you huh? Haku were leaving. Chidori. A Kakashi with what appeared to be a spear of lightning appeared behind Haku. A sound of a thousand birds chirping filled the air as he got closer and closer a wall of ice appeared in between them ending the attack with a huge blast. As the dust cleared Haku and Sabuza were gone, damn it, a Kyubi chakra less Naruto cursed out closing his eye patch and hiding his bow staff as did Kakashi hiding his Sharingan. Don't worry they'll be back, Kakashi responded walking back with Naruto to the genin who were still frozen from the battle. W what was that Charka sensei? Sakura screamed out with confusion wanting to know about that red shroud of chakra that had surrounded his sensei. What was that attack Kakashi? Sasuke also screamed wanting to know that lightning attack Kakashi had used. Yes with that he could definitely kill Itachi. Excellent job senseis, Sai said with his usual fake smile. Naruto and Kakashi ignoring their other two students turned to Sai and greeted him with a smile. Thank you Sai. Both of them said at the same time making the other students face falter and later cry out for answers they never got. 
A little kid no taller than three feet ran up the stairs crying leaving Team 7 and his client eating dinner in a small humble table. That was harsh Naruto, Kakashi spoke a little angry at his comrade. The kid needs to see the harsh nature of the world, if he wants to die a coward's death let him do so but let me eat in peace, Naruto sneered out as he continued eating his ramen he had brought from Konoha. Naruto, Kakashi yelled out slamming his fist down as he began to shake and he spoke again, I thought you were better than this Naruto. I'm disappointed in you. Let me tell you something that man named Gato, he's dead to me as well as every other scum like him on the planet. Naruto spoke and scoffed at his teammate's weak demeanor. Walking away from everyone Naruto slammed the main entrance door going towards the forest to train till he dropped. I am sorry about that, Kakashi said sighing continuing to eat his food. Stupid Dobi can't control his emotions Sasuke told himself not listening to the irony to that statement. How does a true shinobi die? Sakura thought with a saddened expression. They continued eating until Sakura left to join her sensei in training. Leaving them she picked up her blade and made her way to the spot she would imagine her sensei would be in. Arriving she was met with Naruto trying out a blue sphere but it suddenly started to turn black without a second more going by a huge explosion rose through the area that had emitted from Naruto's hand. Sensei. Sakura ran towards her sensei who had fallen a couple of feet away. His look was that of a pained expression but he quickly grinned. It's almost complete, what is? A new S rank technique I am creating. What, hi hi whatever let's focus on you. Show me your skills Haruno, Naruto sighed pulling out two kanai in a reverse grip waiting for his apprentice to attack. Taking out her sword she got into the Uzumaki stance which had fitted her quite well with her ill temper and strength she had learned it quite fast. Rushing at Naruto with her sword she held it with two hands and went with a simple straight slash through his chest, however she was met with Naruto, Kanai holding her back. Stop it with the basic moves or it will get you killed, you might have been able to catch Sabuza by surprise but next time it won't be easy. Hi, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Yes, the shadow clone technique. Naruto had found out she had rather large reserves, enough to be considered Junin level so he managed to blackmail the Sandame into giving him the technique, and with that she was able to create a maximum of five clones. In this fight however she made only one that had rushed straight on to Naruto, evading the clone the Chunin hit in with a kanai making it disappear. However it was a clear distraction as the pink-haired Genin swiftly came face to face to Naruto who had just barely managed to bring up his kanai to block the sword. Cha! Sakura screamed putting more force into her hands creating a blue-like aura around her fist holding the blade signifying she was putting a great amount of chakra into boosting her physical strength. Eventually Naruto added his own chakra into his hands fighting Sakura for strength. She was quickly backed off and now forced to go on her knees losing her advantage very quickly. Noticing her imminent loss she sighed and called defeat. Backing away Naruto started spearing his killer intent making Sakura gasp and wonder what the heck was wrong with her sensei. That was miserable Sakura. I showed you my sacred clan's technique and you didn't even use the first form correctly. Sensei I, no go ahead and give me 100 push-ups. Hi sensei, getting on the ground she started doing push-ups she failed to see her sensei's smiling face. She's grown so much, Naruto thought happily mentally praising his student but of course never showing it. Get up, hi. Getting into their taijutsu stances Naruto mentally chuckled at her way of fighting. She had copied so much after him he might as well say he had a mini-me, take that guy. She better not disappoint me in our bloody battle yet to come. Good morning sleepyhead. Kakashi whispered into Naruto's ear making him slowly wake up to Kakashi's smooth voice and while some may consider that a blessing Naruto thought otherwise. Damn you. Getting up Naruto and Kakashi had on some black tights and nothing else showing his well-toned six packs in full display to Tazuna's daughter. You on my W will be going in now, oops, Naruto and Kakashi began to chuckle a little as they changed and went to have breakfast with everyone. They had their normal routine of eating and training. The days had gone by slow with no signs of Sabuza or any assailants. Kakashi, hum, let's switch students. I want Sasuke for the day. Sure. Walking towards their team there was Sai who was painting, Sakura who was twirling a senbon and Sasuke who was brooding about Sakura having senbon. Sasuke you're with me for today, huh? Hell no, it's a order. Naruto grinned making Sasuke a little scared of him. 
Deciding not to push Naruto any further he complied and followed suit behind the chunin. Better teach me something good Naruto, no today we're taking a lesson about a certain pink-haired girl. Huh, Naruto in a burst of speed pinned Sasuke down making him cry out in pain not even getting a chance to react or say something Naruto took out a kanai and began to speak. I know who you are Sasuke. Naruto whispered to a squirming Sasuke. You're nothing but a fool seeking power to kill Itachi. I see you spying on my students training so tell me Uchiha. What is it you seek with my apprentice? You. Naruto not having it picked up up like he was nothing but a bug and punched him square in the face. Tell me. Naruto spoke menacingly as his lone eye turned blood red piercing through the eyes of Sasuke they showed him his death on Naruto's hands making Sasuke fear for his life. The Uchiha gulped and began to speak. She deserves nothing. A clanless dobi like her doesn't deserve a blade or to even be a ninja at all that. He was cut off when Naruto once again grabbed him by his collar and slammed him down on the cold ground making him take in dirt into his whole Naruto grinned watching him spit out the disgusting blob of dirt. Kakashi is coming soon and when he tells you what happened you say training. And get this Uchiha. Mess with Sakura and ill have you join your fellow clansmen, Naruto whispered in his ears making Sasuke freeze. That should straighten him up, walking away he began to walk towards a small clearing trying to begin to continue learning his new secret technique. Somewhere in the bushes however were three men who had on pure white mask. What is this? Quickly taking out a kanai he met the ninja's blade. The other two tried to rush to him through the sides but were met with Naruto teleporting away from them. Throwing his kanai at one of them the sounds of blood gushing and the man crying for help was met for a few seconds till he reached his death. What unsettled Naruto was the fact that the ninja were emotionless to their comrade's death. Rushing with their tontos they tried cutting Naruto in his neck but jumping over one he slammed the ninja on the floor as he tuck out a kanai and slashed the throat of said assailant. What do you want from me? Danzo. Flashback a lone chunin stoof hiding in between a couple of trees spying upon the village elder named Danzo. The young Serutobi Naruto had a lot of reasons to suspect of Danzo, especially when the old man would tell him to steer clear of the old war hawk but the question was why. Activating his Byakugan he began to read of the lips of Danzo who stood in front of two Anbu, but these were different. They had on pure white mask. Was the mission successful? Hi Danzo Sama Orochimaru has been located and given the scroll. What? Naruto mentally screamed shocked that Danzo was in contact with the village's biggest traitor as well as the traitor who left his sensei or Naruto would say his old man. Not only that but it's all under the observation of Danzo and a secret from the old man. What are you up to Danzo? Are you a traitor as well? May Root Porsper, hi. They all dispersed clearing the area they had been in leaving Naruto alone to his thoughts. Damn it I can't tell the old man this he might do something stupid I am going to have to keep it to myself for now. Flashback over, so you know. The boss wants to tell you that he's watching you, in case that you expose our secrets your death will be imminent as well as your apprentice. Damn it they caught on to me. I need to to devise a plan before I head back to Konoha or it will be the death of me. Naruto argued in his mind but his words were a different story. I see. Well I am okay with dying but when you mess with my student that's something else. In a blur of speed Naruto appeared behind the ninja charging blue chakra into his palm he screamed. Rasengan, slamming it into the back of the screaming ninja eventually Naruto's fist cleared through the ninja's chest leaving a huge hole where his heart should be. W what happened? A pure looking civilian girl cried out dropping onto her knees ruining her nice black kimono. While she looked in shock and fear Naruto had cursed his look for having let a girl witness him killing three men like it was nothing. Shit. Hey are you okay? I should be asking you that dat bayo, Naruto laughed weakly scratching the back of his head weakly embarrassed of a random civilian having to see all that. I am fine, she responded a little more confidently, that's great now you should leave there might be more around. Naruto cut himself off grabbing the girl quickly evading large earth spikes that had came for them. Quickly grabbing a kanai from his vest he threw it at a nearby bush and not a second later a body dropped dead with a kanai to its head. Stay close to me. Naruto whispered to the girl pushing her closer to him eventually she was grabbing onto him with her arms around his waist. Putting up a single hand seal Naruto called out, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique. Two clones appeared in front of Naruto quickly flashing through hand signs. Kaden Gokaku no Jutsu. Fire style, fireball jutsu. 
Both clones spewed their fire as they united creating a devastating firestream that began to engulf the area that had multiple root members who had been caught thanks to Naruto's Byakugan. It's over now, Naruto said trying to get the girl to release him. However something was wrong, she was reaching for her pouch as if going for a weapon. Quickly pushing her away he grabbed a kanai and blocked multiple senbon coming at him. What are you doing? I came here to finish the job for my boss Sabuza Sama. In a blur of speed another figure joined the fight and landed next to Haku kicking her away with great force. I knew I was right to follow you sensei. There stood Sakura with a huge grin on her face as she would finally be able to prove herself, and what better way to do it than in the heat of battle. You know better than to join in on this fight, a voice called out slowly walking from the forest and into the clearing showing Sabuza Momochi. Damn it I need to take care of Sabuza but could Sakura really handle that girl? It's fine sensei I got her, Sakura responded as if she could read Naruto's thoughts. Quickly she brought up her ninjutsu and began to block incoming Senban while Naruto rushed at Sabuza clashing a kanai with Sabuza's executioner's blade. Your student is as good as dead. She's weak compared to Haku and not only that. Dot but she lacks the intent to kill. That's where you're wrong Sabuza it's your student who lacks the intent to kill. I mean who chose Senban as a weapon she obviously trying to injure not kill. We'll see, Naruto and Sabuza clashed blades once again fighting for dominance. They would occasionally switch places and swing at each other as if they were dancing and trying to prolong the fight as soon as possible. Naruto had his reasons but why was Sabuza doing this? Haku vs Sakura Sakura began to pant having had blocked another barrage of Senban coming for her vital spots. In a quick second Sakura herself threw multiple SENBN laced with poison at Haku but she evades them with ease having the much superior speed against Sakura. Cha! Sakura chanted her war cry smacking her chakra induced fist into the ground making the ground around Haku to crumble and split apart. What immense strength! I need to make sure she doesn't hit me! Haku thoughts spin through her mind trying to devise a plan that didn't involve her getting close. Sensatsu Suisho, Secret Jutsu. 1000 needles of death. A thousand needles made of water made their way towards Sakura who was shocked at the horrible situation she was in. Damn it I still don't know any elemental jutsu damn you sensei. Sakura mentally cursed her sensei for the predicament she was in that could have been avoided easier than how she was going to use. Cage Bunshin no jutsu. Sakura screamed creating a single clown that threw her away letting the clone take the needles instead of her. She's got quick battle IQ but can she match my speed, Haku ran in Junin speeds eventually reaching Sakura's gut putting her fist into her making her scream in pain and fly away crashing into a nearby tree. As I thought I'm faster, that may be true but a true shinobi must see the hidden meaning in things ya know, Sakura chanted out grinning puffing into smoke. Not a second later Sakura slammed her heel into Haku's back pushing her into the ground creating a HDE crater. H how? Haku said with anger towards her opponent I had a clone underground near you waiting for the perfect moment to strike now it's over, Sakura said as she was getting ready to slam her sword into Haku. However she was pushed away and suddenly became surrounded by ice mirrors. This is my ultimate technique. Let me show you the difference between us weakling. In each mirror began to appear Haku as if there was a bunshin in each one. Sakura tried slamming her fist into one but to no avail as it just began to repair like nothing. Damn it this situation just got worse. Why are stalling for time when Kakashi could be here any minute? Naruto asked ducking under a punch putting his own fist forward hitting Sabuza in his gut making him grunt but taking the pain like a true ninja. Because Naruto I have a little surprise for you, Sabuza grinned maniacally under his bandages. Even after taking a clear beating from Naruto just know he knew that this was not a battle to be lost, he had to win no matter what. Sweden. Mizu Shuriken. Water style, water shuriken. Naruto launched multiple shuriken made of water towards Sabuza who either blocked them or dodged them, but this gave Naruto the opening he needed. In a sudden burst of speed that shocked Sabuza he felt unimaginable pain coming from his stomach. Naruto had placed his fist into him as hard as he could making the missing ninja scream in pain and fly away. However the, Sabuza, turned into water. The real one had his blade pointed at Naruto behind him. It's over God's successor I have won, Sabuza cut through Naruto but he puffed into smoke showing it to be a cage bunshin. That's where you're wrong. Naruto had a kanai to Sabuza's neck standing behind him with a foxy grin sighing internally for having finished the fight early like he wanted. 
You underestimate me Naruto. My skill far outweigh yours, Sabuza swinged his head back headbutting Naruto, in a sudden succession of moves he slammed his knee into Naruto's gut then placed his fist into his jaw sending him back in unbearable pain. Damn it I need to end this quickly, Naruto thought creating a blue sphere of chakra into his palm. That doesn't look good, Sabuza thought agreeing with himself it was not a good idea to let himself be hit by that jutsu. Running straight ward at Sabuza he grinned seeing that the blonde made the mistake of going for a straight on attack, however Naruto also grinned. A ninja must see through deception, Naruto puffed into smoke while a voice behind the swordsman screamed, Rasengan. The jutsu landed on Sabuza causing him to scream in pain and fall into the ground cursing a huge crater around him. Although before he passed out he managed to whisper out to Naruto. Gato ratted you out to Iwagakure, sees you took care of him, came the voice of Kakashi and behind him Sai and Sasuke. Shit, Naruto cursed ignoring them and running towards where he last left Sakura. This can't be good, Kakashi thought to himself soon running suit behind Naruto. A couple of minutes before, damn it. Sakura screamed getting cut again from a senbon to her leg. Why can you just die? Haku screamed launching more senbon at Sakura who kept managing to dodge and rarely get one or two senbon stuck to her. I I can't die here. And not until I prove myself to everyone. It'll show them that they were wrong about me. Sakura screamed spitting out blood she took out her ninjutsu and put it forwards getting ready for her attack. Uzumaki style. Whirlpool slash. Sakura said as her blade turned blue. She slashed her blade in a 360 degree angle creating huge force of winds against the ice mirrors cracking and even breaking some but that was not enough. It is not enough Sakura. You die here except your fate. Fate is bullshit. Sakura dodged another barrage of Senbon not realizing Haku was preparing another technique. Hasatsu Hiyoso. Certain kill ice spears, ice spears emerged from the bottom of Sakura striking her in her leg and right eye making her scream in pain. A-G-H-H-H-H-H, Sakura screamed in pain breaking the spears with her bare hands. Damn you. Sakura putting all her will and force into her blade she smashed it into the ground creating a huge shockwave catching Haku off guard as the ice mirrors all broke leaving Haku stunned a couple of feet away from a near dead Sakura. What power. This girl needs to die. For Sabuza sama Haku created a dagger of ice into her hand slowly walking towards Sakura. I I am not done yet, Sakura whispered out throwing out her broken ninjutsu and taking out a single trench knife she had for situations for this one. Your will to keep going, it's strong and I respect that but that alone is not enough, Haku said rushing towards Sakura who had her free hand on her eye to prevent herself from bleeding anymore. They both clashed blades, each getting a few cuts in shredding their clothes. By this time Sakura was reaching her physical limit, she could just not possibly keep on going in this fight with her near empty chakra reserves she could die any minute. If I am going to die I know I did it for the right cause and I won't regret it. I will die like a true ninja. Haku dodging a slash pushed her dagger deep inside Sakura's leg making her scream, not giving up however Sakura shoved her blade into Haku's chest making her gasp. It's over. Dot for both of us, Sakura whispered to Haku who managed to crack a small smile. I guess it is, a few seconds of pure silence followed by a sound of both their bodies hitting the ground was heard. Sakura. Naruto screamed out realizing her had made in too late when he saw both bodies. No, Kakashi barely managed to speak out that single word as his memories of his old genin team emerged. Team 7 surrounded Sakura trying to heal her as soon as possible. Naruto was pumping as much of his own chakra that he could into her to save her from chakra exhaustion but her eye was a huge problem. She basically had no eye just a hollow hole where blood kept spouting out. Sakura, Sai and Sasuke gasped out. Sasuke seeing her was too focused on her well-being to even realize the blood red one Tomo Sharingan that had awakened in him. Did he really care about Sakura that much to have awakened the cursed dojutsu for her? I know what needs to be done. Naruto took off his eye patch, showing his Byakugan making the genin gasp not ever knowing what was under that eye patch. Taking the famed Keke Jenke he started to put it into Sakura and successfully managed to transplant the eye into her. She'll be fine for now, Naruto spoke out much to the relief of everyone. On the other side Haku was starting to awaken greeting her master Sabuza who was nearing her. I'll kill you both right here, 
Naruto whispered out ignoring the pain in his eye he ran in bloating speeds towards a shocked Sabuza who was too exhausted to counter soon enough. Naruto now behind him created a normal Rasengan it suddenly began to turn black with flames surrounding the black sphere. Kaden. Goen Rasengan. Fire style. Great flames Rasengan. The black sphere smashed into a screaming Sabuza who began to be surrounded by black flames mirroring those of the Amaterasu flames until Sabuza was nothing but ashes. Sabuza Sama, Haku screamed from the floor, H he was all I had. Kill me Naruto san. With pleasure, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto created two shadow clones that holded Haku down. A glimpse of pity and anger emerged from Naruto's face but in the moment he gave no s towards the life of the bastards that dared kill his student. Goodbye. Naruto spoke killing Haku quickly with a kanai. Blood spattered across his clothes and face before he got off Haku. That was unnecessary Naruto, Kakashi spoke with sadness. There is no such thing in this cruel world, Naruto whispered out holding his student close letting out a tear of blood from his lone eye. I'll never let anybody hurt you again. Seem that we finally found you Serutobi Naruto, came a voice not too far away showing Gato and around 30 Iwa Anbu. This can't be good, Sasuke and Sai said at the same time backing away slowly towards Kakashi. Leave this to us, Kakashi said to his team walking towards the Anbu followed suit by Naruto. Trash like Iwa deserve death, Naruto chuckled darkly making everyone around him even Kakashi shudder feeling the blonde's killer intent. We're going to have a nice talk when we get back home Naruto, the Kyubi thought in his cage ignoring the slaughter going on in front of him. It had been a week after the mission at the wave. Sakura had been rushed to the hospital and has been stable so far but the Byakugan in her eye was too strained and was lost, for now she wears an eye patch identical to Naruto. Naruto and Team 7 had been training themselves till dropping. Even Kakashi had joined them a couple of times having his daily spars with Naruto who had a substantial amount of power due to losing his Byakugan. On that regards he still kept on battling the fox on whether or not to transplant the Sharingan onto himself. Naruto himself also knew of the power he had just lost, not only did he lose Ai but it was one of the most feared Keke Jenke known around the elemental nations for Kami's sake. He needed power to be able to match his prime self back at the wave and what better way than to transplant a Mangekyu Sharingan onto yourself. I need power ya furball and I need that Sharingan, Naruto screamed. Enter Naruto Shippuden Ost, despair, no and that's final or do you want me to cast that genjutsu of the horrors you caused at wave, Kuruma said with a grin. He had begun casting memories onto Naruto's dreams while adding his own ideas, not only did he put on repeat the death of Haku and Sabuza but Naruto could feel their fear. He could feel the fear and desperation of Sabuza seeing Haku near death, he could feel the sadness and despair of Haku watching her father figure die. Why you bastard, Naruto growled hyperventilating, falling on his knees in front of the beast. He had been Eve crying at times remembering what he did even at times thinking about suicide. I can cut our deal any time kit, and you will no longer have power, just some brat who can't handle death. Shut up. This world Naruto. It's filled with hatred, I mean look at me. I am the embodiment of it you fool. Kuruma screamed looking down on his jailer. I I said shut up, the shinobi system is corrupted. Filled with war and death, wars and death is all there is so man up. B but Shisui sensei h he, Naruto breathed out, and thus the real reason you have so much hatred emerges. He is dead Naruto and he always will be and you know what it's all your fault. Shut up damn you. Naruto awoke to birds chirping outside his window as he slowly got up and made himself some coffee before getting ready to go to team meetings. I am slowly dying inside aren't I, indeed you are. End Naruto Shippuden Ost, despair. Hey team. Kakashi spoke in a loud voice making the others wince in annoyance. It's 7 in the morning Kakashi be more quiet, Sasuke said to him not sparring another look at Kakashi's dramatic look of sadness. Kakashi-san you need to become more strict you're stating to remind me of my perverted sensei Jiraiya. Well you see Naruto, everyone should aspire to be like that man. The books he created a gift from Kami him, Kakashi was cut off when Naruto put his hand up signaling to stop talking making him sigh and cry fake tears while quickly pulling out his favorite book and reading it like nothing had happened. How is Sakura by the way? Sasuke asked the group making Naruto tense. 
He and Sasuke had the worst relationship possible but the Uchiha had finally began to show his true colors. He cared about his team and Sakura, even as going so far as awakening his bloodline to the sight of Sakura near death. She's fine she will be joining us soon but right now she is recovering, Kakashi spoke out releasing the tension in the air. Today I will be taking Sasuke and Naruto will take Sai, he said speaking to his team leaving soon after with Sasuke leaving Naruto and Sai. Naruto and Sai simply gazed into each other's eyes both putting up a fake smile for a few seconds till Naruto turned around as he began to look at the bright blue sky. So Sai. Tell me boy. What is Donzo's plan with me? Naruto whispered but Sai remained passive as he too got closer to Naruto but turned his back on him too gazing at the blue free sky. What do you mean Naruto sensei, don't make it harder my student. What is your goal here? To spy on you to devise a plan to eliminate you. I I see then. Will you be killing me now Naruto sensei? Sai spoke with the first time in years he spoke with sadness in his voice. Naruto turned around and grabbed Sai making him face the chunin straight on. Putting his hand up Sai expected death but was met with a soft touch to his head, opening his eyes he saw Naruto smiling warmly at him. Don't fret my genin as very soon my time will be up so let's focus on making you stronger, Naruto kindly said to him making the genin wonder what those words meant. Naruto however gave him no second more to think as he grabbed a kanai and met it with Sai's tonto that he had pulled out to block the blade. Think quickly and don't second guess yourself. Naruto screamed going for another strike to Sai's throat only for the kanai to be swiped away by his student's blade. Trying to get his own slash in Naruto instead grabbed the hilt of the swords and pushed it down. Why haven't you told the Hokage? Sai blurted out Naruto simply started at him and smiled. Quickly he shoved the blade into the ground and put his knee into Sai's stomach making him gasp as he tried to catch Hus breathe Naruto spoke. Because what's the point of telling a man to knows it all? And that moment Sai simply stood there shocked. The Hokage the man who was revered to be the second coming of the god of shinobi. A man who was said to be the kindest Hokage knew about Root. How and when did this happen? And why hasn't he done anything? I know what you're thinking Sai and yes I think the same thing every day of my life. I really do think the old man's time is coming soon and thus comes the reason why he won't do anything, he simply can't. He doesn't have the willpower to cause a civil war. I see, Sai whispered to himself sounding. Dot sad Naruto who noticed this blocked a kick coming from him and picked him up by the collar and smashed him into the ground creating a small crater in the ground. What is your true goal Sai? Naruto asked T to be free, Sai said letting out a single tear. At that moment Naruto picked him up and hugged him tightly making Sai gasp a little never getting this time of affection. Me too Sai, me too, a couple of hours later Naruto made his way to the hospital carrying a single white rose with him. He had a cigarette with him as always trying to release some stress that had been with him since team training. Walking into the hospital he ignored the people scared of him and made his way to Sakura's room where she stood hooked up to tubes and asleep. Sakura-chan, Naruto spoke sadly. He picked up a chair and put OT next to her as he sat down putting the rose on the nightstand next to her where there were six other roses, one for each time he came and visited her. Sakura herself had not woken up since the wave mission and was in a coma ever since. Damn it Sakura why can't you just wake up, Naruto whispered letting out tears from his lone eye. He gazed around the room and noticed there were no Anbu guarding her. This infuriated him to no end. He quickly got up and made his way to the Hokage's residence with killer intent flooding the area around him. He burst into the room and looked at his old man dead in the eyes who was quietly sipping tea and reading his mountains of paperwork. What is the problem Naruto my boy you're scaring the Anbu around me, the Hokage spoke seriously. Why isn't there any Anbu guarding my student old man, Naruto spoke venomously. Is there a reason for her to need protection, the Hokage said to Naruto as he watched him flinch. Here is inside noticing he had guessed right. Whatever is wrong you know you can tell me right Naruto. No need to worry about me. I am worried about my student who is in a coma unprotected with the chance of her getting attacked. I am sorry Naruto but my Anbu are stretched thin I can't afford to waste a single Anbu agent. Waste. You old, he was stopped when he felt a sword to his back. It was a Anbu agent who had pulled a wrong move. Quickly two other Anbu dropped the Anbu agent who had pulled one on Naruto. Any violence against Naruto-san is prohibited by the Hokage rabbit. The agent spoke as they both pulled the agent back to his hiding spot. The Hokage on his part sighed, 
I am sorry Naruto I didn't mean it like that but please notice this. The Chunin exams are up in a month and I need every agent I can get, Hiruzen said. I understand then. Hokage-sama I wish to be pulled from active duty, Naruto said not sparring the look of shock on Hiruzen. But Naru, no old man this is non-negotiable I will be taking a leave of absence till Sakura wakes up, until then I will be taking guard post on Haruno Sakura's hospital room. You really to care about her. But why? Hiruzen spoke out curiously. Naruto who was already on his way out stopped right at the door and looked at the Hokage his adoptive father with a big smile. I may only be three years older than her but I see her as my own daughter. It had been a day since the argument between Naruto and the Sandame, they haven't spoken since. Most likely because he was hiding in the shadows in Sakura's bedroom. I still need to find a way to deal with Root. Naruto's thoughts drifted into multiple scenarios. He could either completely eliminate them but technically he could be killing hundreds of leaf ninja all for his sake. Second he could eliminate Danzo only and take over Root as their new leader, but that would lead to too many problems in the near future. Damn it, Naruto spoke aloud to himself never taking his eyes off his student. Her parents would visit occasionally but Naruto never showed himself knowing well that her parents hated him with a passion due to the Kayubi. So instead he never slept, only guarded the pink-haired Kunoichi through day and night while thanks to the Kayubi chakra running through his body subconsciously he could withstand up to a week of no sleep. As he continued to guard her a visit that shocked him came into the room. Come out Naruto, Jiraiya said standing next to the Sandame. In a fire Shunshin Naruto stood in front of the two greatest ninja in the village currently. What do you want, Naruto stated not even making it sound like a question it was more like an angry statement. We come with a S rank mission for you. The Sandame spoke going straight to the point shocking Naruto who had gotten used to the old mons blabbering. No, Naruto replied facing away from them and putting his attention to Sakura. It's for Sakura-chan Naruto, the eldest Serutobi said making Naruto turn on his interest on said mission making Hiruzen scream in victory internally. I am listening then, Naruto turned around to the Sandame. You are to retrieve Senju Tsunade, Jiraiya said pulling out a scroll with more details on the secret mission. Naruto bit his lip slightly facing toward Sakura. I can't just leave her. My enemies will take advantage of this and try something on her. I know that's why I will be guarding her, the Sandame spoke as the other two waited for further explanation. I will be transferring her to the Hokage's hospital room in the tower where she will be under Anbu surveillance until your return. What brought this change old man? Last time I suggested this you deemed her a unnecessary cost of men, Naruto eyed the old man. I know but we need Tsunade. She will be a great asset for the Chunin exams to come in a few weeks, Hiruzen said. Fine but if something were to happen to her you too. Trust me I'll kill that man and kill every single one of his stupid soldiers, Naruto glared at them both making them flinch with them both well knowing what he was talking about Root. Very well then let's get going Naruto, Jiraiya said happily while Naruto looked at him with confusion. I thought this was a solo mission? Oh it is but I need to show you something before you leave. They walked to a nearby training ground leaving Sakura to the Anbu agents who had gulped and even cowered in fear when Naruto told them they'd die if something happened to that woman. They continued walking until Naruto and Jiraiya stopped and in a puff of smoke Jiraiya summoned a large scroll and a small scroll. This is a scroll from your father you will need and the big one is. A summoning contract. Jiraiya gave the small one to Naruto and opened the scroll. One name popped out to Naruto though Namikaze Minato. His father and above all the man who saved Konohagakure. Even Naruto knew he would never even get close to the man his father once was. But skill and pure power. One day Naruto signed it without hesitation and as he was about to summon a frog he passed out before he even got to use a single drop of his chakra. Brat spent days guarding that girl without sleeping. Jiraiya smiled at his student and took him to the Serutobi compound. Good thing the mission is tomorrow. Remember what I said about my student, Naruto said with a commanding voice to the Hokage who simply nodded and watched Naruto leave through the main gates. Now to the nearest town to ask for some information on this fish curing Senju. Next morning Naruto made his way through a small village a couple of hours off Konoha. He had taken it slow since the reports stated she was in this exact village so currently he was in no rush to beat time. Wearing a black robe to disguise himself he went into a bar. New outfit under the cloak on top of chapter. 
Getting closer he went to the front where a tall bald man with a scar going vertically along the left part of his face answered. What are you having mister? Just a bottle of sake is fine. The man threw a well-known medium-class bottle at Naruto as Naruto paid him he began to enjoy on his liquor. Suddenly however a large bulky man grips Naruto's shoulder. You look like you're a long way from home boy. Two other large men some even taller and larger than the one closet to Naruto stand up their chairs grinning getting ready to steal Naruto while the other men in the bar just stood there and watched the events unfold. Naruto mumbled something and that simply made the thugs chuckle as the leader spoke. What was that son? Or are you too scared to speak how about you just give us your money? Naruto simply brushed off the grip of the man still hiding his true identity he spoke in a dark voice. I hate killing. The undercover blonde took out a dagger as to not seem like a ninja and slammed it into the heart of the thug killing him immediately. The two other men battled cried their way towards Naruto who ducked a punch and put his blade into the side of the man, quickly taking it out he finished the man off easily slicing his throat leaving the last one on his knees from the fear he felt. I am a bounty hunter. Someone give me information on Senju Tsunade or I'm killing everyone here. Naruto spoke loudly to everyone in the bar who gulped in fear as they prayed to their favorite god that someone had information on the slug princess. That's where a man with a large straw hat and a white cloak stood up. May I ask your name, bounty hunter? I have no such thing. I see well then my name is Raiden. I too am a bounty hunter on the search for Orochimaru so how about you give me any intel on him and I'll give you some of mine on the last Senju. The man now identified as Raiden spoke. What makes you say I have information on that snake? Naruto asked curiously. Simple, he walked closer and whispered into Naruto's ear, I saw that leaf headband after all. Damn it cover blown already, Naruto thought sighing internally. I'll give you this. There is talks of Orochimaru residing in a new village named Otogakure located in the land of rice paddies. Naruto replied eyeing the man waiting for his part of the deal. Senju was last seen heading to the land of rice paddies. Hum how interesting, seems that we will have to journey together my fellow hunter, Raiden smiled. So it seems, Naruto replied walking away with Raiden following suit. So how old are you? Raiden asked walking down the dirt path. Fifteen, Naruto said speaking the truth, and you? Seventeen, Raiden replied taking out a fairly basic black and gold kodachi and cleaning it with a ragged towel. So what bring you to hunt one of the most dangerous rogue ninja known in the elemental nations? Naruto asked. Well it's quite a short story. I love money, Kodachi laughed loudly annoying Naruto who sighed but listened to Raiden who seemed to want to speak again. My village. Betrayed me. After that I quickly learned how to fight and fend for myself, and thus here I am only trusting money, Raiden spoke with passion as if money was his only goal in life. Naruto guessed it was. And what about you? What brings a leaf ninja to hunt their own? Naruto's partner asked. Quite simple like you. I wish to bring her back, ah so that thing at the bar was a facade. You aren't that bad after all Tokume. Anonymous huh? I have a feeling I want like this guy very much Naruto grunted and as if Raiden could read his thoughts he laughed out loud again. They continued walking up towards the land of rice paddies only stopping to rest and eat. They had noticed they both actually had an unhealthy addiction to ramen much to their laughs. Even Naruto had to admit he was warming up to Raiden, that red-haired man sure knew how to make the blonde laugh so much he spit out his ramen through his nose. Naruto even went so far as to show his face. Raiden paid no mind to the eye patch and scars as well as luckily not showing signs of knowing Naruto's identity. They continued walking next to a rice field filled with civilians who were batching the morning crop. The sun still not fully out as they enjoyed a cup of coffee together as they strolled. Say Tokume, hum. Naruto turned back to see Raiden standing there with a saddened expression. W will you? Help me fight Orochimaru. he stuttered trying to ask his friend to fight alongside him. He even went as for as bowing on one knee. Naruto himself simply smiled. This mission was turning out to be much more interesting than he had expected. Walking towards Raiden he lifted the man up and showed him his smile which Raiden had seen for the first time. Of course I'll fight with you so as long as we kill him and get Senju, not only that but you're coming back to Konoha with me. Raiden gasped at his friend who was pretty much offering a home. He let out a single tear and shook Naruto's hand. Deal Tokume. Sorry but my real name is Naruto. 
Naruto rubbed the back of his head embarrassed as his friend only grinned. Ma I like Tokume better. Yes this was the beginning of a great friendship. It was a peaceful morning in the Hokage's office. Two men stood there gazing onto the village hidden in the leaves. It's peaceful isn't it, indeed it is, Hiruzen the third Hokage stood next to his old teammate Danzo as they talked about many things but one was ready to cause huge trouble, Naruto. I've told you this and I'll tell you again Danzo. Don't touch Sakura or Naruto or he'll end up killing you, Hiruzen said with anger. Of course I won't touch a mere Chunin and Genin, Danzo scoffed playing his role. I am serious Danzo. Touch her and it's over for you and root. Hiruzen screamed slamming his hand into the desk creating a large band followed by a long pause of silence. Just two rivals glaring at each other. Danzo after a while simply left the room slamming the door on the way out like a mere child making Hiruzen scoff. I am too old for this shit, back with Dasno after a while he now walked down a dark corridor making his way into a small spot below the village edge. In a blur of the shunshin a lone ninja dressed in a dark coat and a pure white mask stood in front of Danzo. Is it done? Hi he and the snake have been located. ETA is one day till interception of snake and team one against him. Danzo smirked turning away from the ninja slowly walking back into the darkness but not before making his closing statement. After he is dealt with, nobody shall stand in my way. Back in the land of rice paddies Naruto and Raiden had stopped at a small bar where they simply enjoyed each other's company and drank some nice sake. They had finally pinned down Tsunade's location and were not far from her supposed campsite. After a lot of intel gathering they had come to know that she was accompanied by another lady, supposedly her student. Anything on Orochimaru was dark, the man moved very cautiously. He would appear in a nearby village and then disappear as if he was taunting them. It was infuriating to no end. A couple of minutes after sipping their last last round of drinks they made their way out of the bar. They put on their long hats to conceal themselves and made their way into the forest where a fire was lit illuminating the late evening. They continued walking in silence until they left something sharp behind them. It was Tsunade Senju and her supposed student aiming their kanai to their backs. Incredible they actually think they can take us on Tokume, Raiden chuckled only to feel the kanai dig deeper into their clothes. That did not phase him one bit though. I warn you. Leave now or suffer the consequences, Tsunade spoke in a commanding manner but neither Naruto and Raiden moved. Relax ya old had we only want to talk, Naruto said but he made a fatal mistake by calling her that. Infuriated by the name Tsunade dove the blade into Naruto only for him to turn into bright flames burning her hand and causing her to drop her kanai in pain. Shizune had also tried the same thing but was met with lightning from Raiden causing her to feel pain and shock as consequence she fell to the ground in one knee. They were fooled so easily Raiden I guess you were right about the Sanin being weak and old, Naruto or Tokume called out standing on top of a branch while Raiden who was sitting down showing his Kodachi started to chuckle darkly. You damn brats, Tsunade screamed, slamming her fist into the tree making it crumble. However Naruto and Raiden simply landed softly in front of the Sanin. Shizune who had recovered quickly used her Senbon launcher that had been concealed on her wrist began to fire and the duo who simply dodged the attacks as they now stood a little farther back Naruto put his hand up and spoke. Raiden put your blade back into its holster remember this is not the Sanin we came to kill. Naruto said to the man who simply nodded and complied with the orders given. What does he mean by not the right Sanin Tsunade thought as a small place in her heart begged it wasn't Jiraiya. Naruto who had enough of the confrontation slowly began to take of his hat showing his facial features. Tsunade gasped, his hair and whisker marks were a clear giveaway. Naruto. The one and only Ba Chan, Naruto grinned while Shizune was in the dark and was confused Raiden remained composed and emotionless. What are you doing here Gaki? And does Sensei know about this? Tsunade screamed almost comically pointing her finger and the blonde making him laugh genuinely at the woman. Suddenly turning serious however he spoke, Senju Tsunade by orders of the council in the Sandame Hokage you are to return to Konohagakure no Sato immediately. Tsunade who had been ignoring the pure panic of her student spoke back matching Naruto's tone. I Senju Tsunade refused to return, she replied standing proudly in front of her student ready to protect her. Naruto on his part simply sighed. Why did, did this old had have to complete his damn mission? Oh well, 
Naruto shrugged his shoulders walking back to Raiden who had an amused smirk on his face looking at the reactions of the Sanin and her student. W what t that easily? Tsunade failed to speak clearly while her partner failed to speak completely. Hi hi you are off the hook for now I have a Sanin to hunt. Raiden replied finally entering the conversation as he spoke full of conviction and killer intent making itself visible mentioning the word Sanin. Naruto you better not be going after Jiraiya. Tsunade screamed at the blonde who turned to her with a sinister smile making her shiver. Why do I have to tell you anything? Let's go Raiden. Naruto screamed and in fire and lightning shunshun they were gone from the area. W what do we do Tsunade sama? Shizune asked quietly looking at her sensei who was deep in thought until she spoke a while later. We depart tomorrow morning. We're going back to the land of fire it's not safe here, she replied heading to her tent not uttering another word. While they kept doing their own thing Hei failed to see a small toad watching them not too distant from them. Back in a hotel room Naruto and Raiden laughed at the scene they had caused. That sure was entertaining, Naruto said wiping a tear from his eye. It sure was, Raiden replied smiling Naruto however stopped and remembered that killer intent feeling when Raiden spoke of Orochimaru. It made him wonder if there was a past there so he asked away. Raiden, hum. Tell me. The real reason you are hunting Orochimaru? Naruto asked seriously as Raiden simply sighed. Do you really doubt my word that much Tokume? Raiden replied. Yes, Raiden sighed and stood up from his bed and served himself some coffee and Naruto some a well. Take it. This will be a long story, Naruto simply took the cup and listened to the story his partner was going to present. I was originally from a small town bordering the land of lightning. We were quite proficient in lightning as almost every member of our village had an immense affinity for it. We lived a peaceful life up until I was ten, that was when he came into the picture, Raiden clenched his teeth as he began to shake but was calmed down by Naruto who signaled him to continue the story and so he did. Anyways that's when Orochimaru came into the picture. He offered us protection from Kumo who were on our asses and was about to bring us into their village against our will and so we were desperate and my father the village leader, complied with the snake sanin. Slowly we integrated into the new village here in the land of rice paddies. Everything went smoothly until out greatest ninja started to disappear out of thin air, me being eleven at the time grew angry with my father for not being able to find them so I did it myself. I followed on of the strongest of our village and for weeks I stuck to him hiding in the shadows waiting for something to happen and so something did. Two men dressed in all black took the man out like he was nothing, I was terrified. But mastering up all my courage I followed them up until reaching a cave where Naruto there they all were. Every single ninja gone missing was there rotting away dead. Naruto gasped at this turn of events. Was it Orochimaru or someone else? I showed father who was devastated and ran to Orochimaru demanding answers. Not a day later he arrived into our village with 100 men. We cheered at him thinking he was here to deal with the unknown killers but how wrong we were. It was a slaughter, he killed every single one of the villagers and only I sneaking out through a tunnel system made it out alive. Raiden finished telling his story to Naruto who could not even mutter a word. They simply gazed at each other only sipping their coffee until a few minutes later Naruto spoke. So skill wise, how strong are you actually? I would say after learning all the lightning jutsu and techniques I could come across I say about what you would say junin level. I see, Naruto simply nodded and stood up causing Raiden to raise eyebrow in suspicion to what Naruto was doing. What are you doing Tokume? We're leaving. There is no use to finding and killing that snake if we laze around, Naruto smiled and said to his partner making him crack a or smile. I like your style Tokume, Raiden said with a hint of happiness as they cleaned up their room and walked through the dark night towards the center of the land of rice paddies. By the way what is under your eye? Raiden asked curiously at Naruto who simply kept walking. You will find out when we kill that bastard, deal. A duo dressed in black robes walked down the peaceful morning. They were getting closer to their destined location and were currently walking along a dirt path and on each side rice fields, yet said fields were empty. I don't like this, one man said, taking off his hood showing his battle scars as well as his distinctful blonde hair and eye patch. It was Serutobi Naruto. I agree, the other man said showing a pale skin man that went by the name Raiden. They continued walking as eventually some merchants would pass them calming them down and even eventually a large caravan of merchants was seen from the distance. As the caravan continued they eventually met each other face to face. 
a couple of them cowered in fear at the sight of Naruto's scars but it was a daily occurrence for him. Raiden just chuckled and continued walking alongside his partner. However as soon as they passed said caravan several ninja wires sprouted from the ground wrapping themselves around an unsuspecting Naruto and Raiden. Dropping their henges the twenty merchants of the caravan showed to be root operatives. Not a second later another fifty soldiers came from the trees and behind them two figures walked slowly. Raiden seeing the duo growled and began to shake trying to get free of the wire. Orochimaru and his sex toy Kabuto nice to meet you again. Raiden spoke giving up on getting free but why not have some fun with them at this point. Orochimaru simply chuckled while Kabuto took a frown. I see you're doing well Raiden. Now tell me how is your family doing? The Sanin asked laughing while Raiden simply glared at him. The rogue ninja shook his head and turned his head to the other man chained up as he licked his lips he then spoke again. Kukuku Naruto kun it's nice to meet you, likewise, never thought I'd get to see Donzo's puppet myself, Naruto replied chuckling causing Orochimaru to frown but, the show was far from over. As you can see Serutobi-san were here to kill you so can you please stop acting like we caught you so easily and show yourself, Katu spoke up causing Raiden and Naruto to smile at one another. In a split second the ninja wire of Naruto and Raiden caught fire and lightning injuring the hands of the root agents holding them. The duo who had been caught suddenly stood up and flexed their shoulders and arms as if the wire had been nothing to them. Orochimaru smiled, this battle would for sure feed his need for amazing shows of power. After all power was what he seeked. He then backed up with his apprentice and got ready to watch the show. Seems if we want to get to the snake we need to kill them first, Raiden said taking out his Kodachi while Naruto said nothing and summoned his bow staff from a seal on his wrist, he then stomped his feet causing a small blade to appear on each tip of his boots. Neither Root or the duo moved, they simply waited for one of them to make a move. And it was done when a Root soldier ran at them and soon followed the rest. Let me deal with them, save your strength, the voice came from Naruto to Raiden who sighed but compiled and moved his way to a small cliff and sat down cross-legged to watch the show as well. Soon after Naruto ran at the huge number of agents who were moving in groups and moved in battle formations unknown to the Serutobi. He did not care however using his bow staff as support he launched himself at one of the men and shoved his foot on the neck of the soldier killing him immediately due to his blade. Keeping his momentum he moved in a 180 and shoved his other foot on the gut of another man. Now on the ground he moved his bow staff in front of him blocking the strike of a Tonto. He then ducked and moved his right leg to drop the man and then rammed his left foot onto the stomach of the soldier. Stepping back he faced ten soldiers who had their blades out. He smirked sticking his staff on the ground he clasped his hands together he screamed, Doten, Yomi Numa, Earth Style, Swamp of the Underworld. Huge amounts of mud erupted from the ground and buried the men alive. Back with Orochimaru he chuckled, seems that old bastard and the fool actually taught the boy some things. Indeed, Kabuto replied, although inside he wasn't too happy seeing how strong the blonde was. Even Kabuto had to admit he was no challenge to the young ninja. Back with Naruto he easily evaded a barrage of kanai and shuriken that had been thrown at him. A couple of ninja had managed to throw smoke bombs at him causing the area around him to fill with smoke. However even in smoke his sense of smell never failed him. Grabbing his bow staff he had stuck to the ground he ran into an unsuspecting ninja that had thought they had caught some time to devise a plan. He smacked his bow staff into the fibs of one of them breaking them completely. One of them seeing the blonde threw a kanai with an explosive tag only for Naruto to turn around and grab it, he then knew it back at him making him blow himself up along with another couple of unlucky ninja. As soon as the smoke cleared all that was left were fifteen ninja while the bodies of the dead ones surrounded around Naruto who had an uncaring expression. Ill end this pointless battle now, the blonde said, putting his bow staff back in its storage seal he jumped back and creating a seal less clone next to him who waved hand signs and the original only clasped his hands together as they screamed. Doden. Doryuden. Earth style. Earth dragon bullet. The original screamed. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu. Fire style, fireball jutsu. The head of a dragon made of mud erupted from the ground as it soon spouted enough hard mud to the ninja as the clone spewed fire from its making the deadly combination kill the ninja almost instantly. The original Naruto dropped the techniques and clone and started walking to the smirking Orochimaru and slightly sweating Kabuto, soon after Raiden landed next to him. 
Kukuku Naruto kun that was quite the show but I have a feeling that is only the tip of the iceberg for you, how about you show me your true power boy? In a split second Orochimaru slammed his fist into Naruto causing blood to spout from his and launch away with great speeds into a tree. Raiden tried to slash the snake with his Kodachi but was met with Kabuto who had a kanai holding back the blade. Your fight is with me, he said pushing Raiden away and fighting him back away from Orochimaru. Show me your true power Naruto-kun, Orochimaru said, soon after he rolled up his sleeve showing black markings along his arm. He then bit his thumb and let the blood of his thumb to rest on the tattoo. Kachiyose number jutsu, summoning jutsu, in a puff of smoke a large snake appeared and on top of it was Orochimaru smiling sinisterly. What am I doing here? The snake cursed, to fight for me of course Manda. I want 100 sacrifices for this Orochimaru, deal he replied laughing getting ready to see what Naruto would come up with. I see, was all that Naruto said who closed his eyes and prepared his technique. Kachiyose number Justu, summoning Jutsu, in a puff of smoke a large toad appeared, a toad Orochimaru and Manda knew all too well. Gamabunta the toad boss, I see you finally summoned me Naruto. I've been waiting for you, he said making Naruto chuckle nervously. My bad boss but now it's time we fight together he replied raising his fist triumphantly causing Gamabunta to smile and grab onto the handle of his sword. Indeed it is that time, back with Orochimaru he sneered his teeth cursing his damn luck, the blonde was stronger than he led on to be. The blonde reminded him of his sensei and old teammate a little too much. As Gamabunta was about to take out his blade Manda wasted to time and launched itself at Gamabunta. I've always wanted frog legs for dinner, he hissed. Raiden and Kabuto. I remember you. You were that weakling of a boy who stood by and watched as Orochimaru's mama killed your village, Kabuto said pointing at Raiden with a grin. The bounty hunter clenched his teeth and said, I wish to no longer talk, I only want to kill you. Raiden. Sandabaruto. Lightning style, thunderbolt. Creating two bluish spheres in his hands Raiden released deadly lightning from them causing the general area to fill up with electricity. The consequence of this was all the lightning filling up in Kabuto's body caused him to bend down on one knee, it even went as far as his body becoming dumb and painful twitching to become of his body. Damn it, Kabuto whispered, he never expected this random man to have such skill in lightning release. He was going to have to reveal his trump cards a little earlier than expected. Slowly standing up he put his fist forward as two blue scalpel-like blades appeared in the form of chakra on his hands. Ah I've hear stories of those who use chakra scalpels in battle, never thought I'd get to see it Raiden said, quickly he took out his kodachi and surrounded it with lightning chakra so it would be able to withstand the chakra blades. Quickly they ran at each other as fast as they could, eventually colliding their blades into each other creating a small spark of lightning. Eventually the more the blades clashed the more the technique of kabuto seemed to wear out though. So it can't withstand my lightning, good to know. Raiden thought as a small smoke emerged from his face. This was proving to be a easier battle than he had anticipated. Kabuto on his part dropped his fading technique and took out a kanai and threw it at Raiden who blocked it, but that was a diversion. Thanks to Raiden putting his attention into the upcoming kanai Kabuto managed to hide. That won't work. He screamed as he quickly flashed through a couple of hand seals and screamed. Raiden. Jabashi. Lightning style, electromagnetic murderer. Raiden pushed as much chakra as he physically could. This caused the lightning that already surrounded the area to begin to rip trees apart and the loud crackle of lightning to become the only sound that filled the area. Eventually a large thud was heard, walking to it Raiden saw the unconscious body of the snake's apprentice. Hey, he said, smiling sinisterly he once again took out his kodachi and stabbed it through the heart of his enemy. Expecting blood however, nothing came out instead Kabuto turned into mud. Damn it that can only mean one thing. Raiden screamed running towards the large fire that showed itself on the other side of a large cliff. He ran to finish the fight once and for all with his first friend Naruto. It was a fierce battle rain began to pour due to the steam of the great fire that surrounded the battlefield. The sound of crashing and the tremble of earthquake ringed around the area. This was a battle of which two legendary creatures sought to end each other. Gaw. The toad chief Gamabunit screamed in pain as his large tonto was forcefully taken away by the quick swipe of the tail of the king of snakes Manda. Bring me oil boss. Naruto screamed preparing his needed hand seals for a combo technique. K 
Kaden. Gamayu Endon. Fire style, toad oil flame bullet. As oil spewed from the of the toad Naruto let free a stream of fire at the same time causing the burning oil to land on the skin of Manda causing him to scream in agony. Orochimaru had been off once he saw the oil coming for him, he quickly ran to safety as he saw his summon puff away from anger and pain leaving him alone in this battle. No matter, the rogue ninja said, quickly he raised his hands and screamed. Futon. Daitopa. Wind style, great breakthrough. The heavy gust of winds that emerged from the Sanin collided against Gamabunta sending him away due to the great force of the winds. However it soon came to his advantage when he had gotten close to his missing Tonto and grabbed it. This battle was not going well for Orochimaru as he began to devise a plan a figure came from the ground showing Naruto charging up a Rasengan. Rasengan. The blonde screamed but narrowly missed the Sanin as the technique hit the ground causing a huge crater due to the backlash of the A-ranked technique. Back to Orochimaru who had nearly missed the technique jumped back in a series of backflips until he reached a safe distance from his opponent. I underestimated you Naruto-kun. You could even face against a Sanin with such ninjutsu prowess, I must say you remind me so much of myself in my younger days, he said grinning. Naruto on his part did not take so kindly to that. I'll never be like you bastard. He roared running towards Orochimaru only to be stopped by two coffins that had emerged between them. Let's see how you fare against these two Naruto-kun. A voice rang between the coffins obviously that of Orochimaru. As the coffin slowly opened the first one appeared to be a man in basic Konoha Junin attire, he had long white hair and resembled Kakashi. It was his father Hitaki Sakumo the second one was a rather tall figure also in standard Konoha Junin attire, this man had long black hair and was a man Naruto knew and even admired. Uchiha Fugaku a man said to be on par with the Yandaimi Hokage. Why you bastard? Naruto screamed as his facial features became much more beast-like due to the anger of himself and the Kyubi surfacing the world. He commanded Gamabunta to leave, this was a battle he would face alone. Not too soon later two figures came running back as one landed next to Naruto and the other next to Orochimaru. What's the problem Tokume? Raiden I am going to have to fight those two inside the coffin for a little. I need you to deal with Orochimaru and Kabuto while I finish them off. Hi, Raiden replied confidently. Not even giving himself a second though he ran towards Kabuto striking his blade against the kanai he held. Back with Naruto he no stood in front of the talkless bodies of Fugaku and Sakumo, knowing this technique due to the teachings of the old man he understood that it was a summoning technique that required a host to transfer the soul of said reincarnation. It was pretty much a soul trapped into a body as the user of the Edo Tensai commanded them against their will. Such a vile technique, good thing it seems to be incomplete, Naruto thought, however his thoughts came to a halt as his lone eye met a fully matured set of Sharingan eyes. Darn Uchiha, Naruto grumbled pushing away Fugaku as he took out a kanai and blocked a strike from the chakra blade of Sakumo. Quickly he took out an explosion tag and dropped it on the ground in front of him, quickly he substituted himself with a log and ignited the tag exploding the two Edo Tensai slaves. However due to the technique's way of working the bodies quickly began to regenerate causing Naruto to sigh softly. This was not going to be an easy battle. I'll have to seal them away. He screamed, taking out a scroll from his back pocket and placing it on the ground. Quickly he stood up and prepared to render his opponents useless to seal them away. That meant going all out quickly he unsealed his bow staff and clashed it against the kanai of Fugaku and the sword of Sakumo. Using his right foot he ficked the shin of Fugaku and then faced Sakumo, as he jumped he performed three kicks in a row. One in his stomach one in his chest and the final one in the head of Sakumo sending him flying back crashing into a tree going straight through it. Now turning to Fugaku who was preparing hand seals that Naruto managed to copy in the nick of time as they both screamed, Katen. Gokaku no Jutsu. Fire style. Fireball Jutsu. As both fireballs clashed Naruto at the same time threw his bow staff at Sakumo who was rushing towards him. As the bow staff got closer a shadow clone of Naruto came from the ground and grabbed the staff. If you want the boss you have to beat me first, the clone screamed, suddenly they clashed their weapons fighting for the advantage. However the clone did not expect that Sakumo would know lightning release as he charged his blade with lightning and sliced through the clone like it was nothing leaving only the bow staff that had split in half. Back with the original who was fighting Fugaku in a battle of fire cursed his luck. 
Damn it there goes one of my staffs, he whispered sadly, they were pretty expensive after all. The fight continued for a couple of minutes with Sakumo having speeds that Naruto hadn't seen since Itachi. However Fugaku's ninjutsu arsenal made him as much of a threat as Sakumo. Truly a deadly duo, Naruto thought cursing his luck, but at least he wasn't fighting some suicide match against the Shodai and the Naidame Hokages. Sakumo and Fugaku ran together as one punched Naruto in his gut the other landed a kick onto his head sending him crashing onto the ground. As Sakumo ran his blade through the grounded Naruto smoke puffed showing a log in his place. Naruto had substituted himself behind them and performed a technique not even giving them enough time to turn around. Doden. Doryuden. Earth style, Earth dragon bullet. The earth dragon that had emerged from the ground spewed mud strong enough to rip trees apart as it came closer to the Edo Tensai duo Fugaku had managed to substitute himself but Sakumo wasn't so lucky as he got taken away from the battle area. He was now in a one-on-one -on -one against one of the men who raised him. But wait where's the other Naruto thoughts train was cut off when he felt a sharp object pierce through his back. It was Sakumo and he had cut through the back of Naruto. Damn it. Naruto screamed as he turned around and slammed a Rasengan into Sakumo, blowing up half his body. Quickly he took out a seal and placed it on him and with a single hand seal the body of the Edo Tensai exploded and left nothing there anymore. Feeling the effects of the cut Naruto began to vomit blood as he took out the chakra blade and the healing ability of the Kyubi rushed to the injury curing him slightly enough to stop the bleeding but he still felt enormous amounts of pain. One done one more to go. Quickly he blocked a jab coming for his face with his hand. You know Fugaku-san I always saw you as a father figure, even if you cannot hear me I wish to tell you that. Once Naruto said that actual tear appeared on Fugaku. Naruto smiled brightly maybe if he died here he'd at least see Shisui and Fugaku again. And no I can't think like that. I still have Kakashi, Sakura, Itachi-sensei and the old man who I call father. The blonde screamed. This battle had just begun in his eye. As the blonde began to fight he had begun noticing that some blood still leaked from his wound. Had the Kyubi been setting him up to die? Damn right brat, a voice rang inside his mind. Ing a he now had another problem to deal with, kill the Uchiha and maybe we can have a conversation about you living through this. Damn that stupid demon fox Naruto snapping out of his thoughts ran straight towards the Uchiha clan leader. He had to admit watching that fully matured Sharingan on Fugaku scared him. But he was never one to run away from battles once they met they clashed their kanai creating a large spark Naruto went for a basic slash but Fugaku anticipating the move moved his head back to avoid it, keeping his momentum on his move he put his foot upwards and hit Naruto's hand causing the kanai to fall to the ground. Fugaku then tried to cut through Naruto's heart but his kunai was also swiped away in an unpredictable movement with Naruto using a karate chop to hit the man's hand. Naruto thinking he had the chance went for a punch to Fugaku but was met with the Uchiha holding his fist. Without saying anything due to the Edo Tensai Fugaku used his other hand and smashed it into Naruto sending him flying away. The blonde coughed up blood as he got up, this was proving to be a hard battle. Boom a explosion was heard of in the distance where Raiden was fighting Orochimaru causing Naruto to harden his expression. He needed to end this now, damn it Kyubi give me power. Naruto roared out, without another word he finally felt it rush to his chakra coils healing his wounds. The red chakra began to surround him creating a chakra cloak of some kind giving him an amazing power surge, one might say he became quite addicted to said chakra. Using his newly acquired chakra he rushed towards Fugaku who surprisingly could still track his movements. But that didn't mean loss for the chunin he quickly took out a seal from his pouch and the kanji on it began to glow. Uzumaki Fuinjutsu style seal. Seal. Once he threw the scroll at Fugaku in began to glow even more as a rectangle appeared and surrounded Fugaku. However this technique he had done required a huge amount of chakra and he was only ever to use it with corroboration of the nine tails. Meaning the chakra the Kyubi gave me is gone, Naruto said, he began walking closer to Fugaku who KEP trying to escape. Doing a single hand seal Fugaku was sealed onto the scroll alongside the already sealed Sakumo. He picked up the scroll and hid it. Wasting no time he ran towards Orochimaru. Damn you Orochimaru. Raiden cursed Orochimaru he prayed for his death. He sought after his life and always will because he is a Avenger. Gah. 
He screamed as his body surrounded itself with lightning raising his speeds to levels Orochimaru had ever only seen in his old Akatsuki members. It was truly a frightening view the Sanin had barely managed to swing his Kusanagi blade he had brought out since the beginning of the fight. They clashed their blades full force, Orochimaru tried to cut Raiden's head off but had no luck when the bounty hunter used his speed to weave and suddenly appear behind the Sanin and kick him away towards the tree line. I see you've been busy, a voice called out behind Raiden. However no reaction came to him since he knew who it was. You're late Tokume. I must say I am quite disappointed, he replied grinning causing Naruto to fall on one knee in mock hurt. Your words they cut. They cut deeper than any blade my buddy, he cried in fake tears causing a small laugh from the both of them. Enough, Orochimaru screamed as he suddenly appeared in the air ready to full swing his kusanagi but was met with the bow staff of Naruto. Those Edo Tensai zombies were weak Orochimaru I expected better. TCH as if you could do any better brat, is that a bet? Hum. Naruto began to laugh maniacally causing Raiden and Orochimaru to look at him curiously as to why the blonde had snapped like that. Suddenly he began creating hand seals. Hand seals Orochimaru knew all too well. The snake felt like running away the moment he started the seals, he was doing the Kachiyose. Edo Tensai no Jutsu, summoning Jutsu, reanimation. He slapped his hand on the ground making a single casket on the ground. As it opened and showed what was inside Orochimaru knew this would be his last battle. One where he would face a man declared a god amongst humanity. The Shodem Hokage, ha 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 you thought that you were the only one with his cells? Wrong fool, Naruto laughed, he then put a seal onto the head of Senju Hashirama causing him to come to life. The past Hokage began to walk slowly out of the casket and towards Orochimaru who began to walk backwards in fear. It's over Orochimaru, Mokaton. Daijiren no Jutsu, wood style, great forest technique. Hashirama screamed putting his fist out with several trees coming out locking up a tight hold on Orochimaru who could do nothing to save himself. Slowly Raiden walked forward Naruto stayed behind and simply let his friend have his revenge. As he pulled his Kodachi out he grinned and said, this is for my village. And with that Orochimaru's head was cut clean off, he was dead. Undoing the Edo Tensai Naruto now stood next to Raiden with a cigarette in his when he finally spoke up. So how do you feel? Living life seeking vengeance was no life at all, and yet I sought it and accomplished it. Let me tell you Tokume what I feel right now is nothing but emptiness. Indeed Raiden I feel the same way as well of in the distance watching it all Kabuto clench his teeth. He would kill Naruto even if it meant selling his soul to the Shinigami. It was a dark cave with the echoes of water drops hitting the cold stones on the floor. There were nine peaks in the cave made of stone and on each stone a hologram of a human in a black robe with red clouds. A deep voice called out in the tallest peak looking down on the rest as his he was Kami himself. The Akatsuki is now assembled. You may ask why we have decided to meet three years earlier than anticipated. The reason is quite simple, I bear some interesting news. Orochimaru the rogue Akatsuki member and Sanin has died in battle. The meeting of nine holograms stayed silent for a minute processing what had been heard until a short member with a tail made of metal said out loud. May we know how this happened? Indeed Zetsu showed me the images it had captured from the battle. I shall now show it to you all, bear the power of the nine-tailed Jinchuriki. The battle scenes began with the short battle between Naruto and Root, none of them were impressed since any one of them could do that faster than the blonde. However their gasp were quite hearable when he confronted Orochimaru as he summoned the toad boss. A powerful threat indeed, a tall man called out whilst he counted his money from his last bounty. The battle raged on with Naruto fighting the Edo Tensai Orochimaru had brought. Itachi seeing his father activated his Sharingan showing its full might to the group. But Itachi was more interested in how Naruto fought and had used his father's appearance to use it as an excuse to better calculate Naruto's moves. He was for once impressed seeing the way Naruto fought his father and Sakuma one of the greatest ninjas to hail the headband of Konoha was quite a show. With the blonde's moves being so unpredictable the Sharingan would barely manage to catch up to him. The battle ended with both Sakumo and Fugaku being sealed by Naruto. Or so they thought it was not a second later when they saw Naruto bring back to life the man who was hailed as a god, Senju Hashirama. The man who was counting his money stopped and showed his killer intent towards the images being shown, 
his hatred for the Senju was like no other. Itachi's eyes widened, this changes everything, he thought narrowing his Sharingan eyes. The rest of the men gasped or shook in fear at seeing the man who could single-handedly take them all on and win easily. This is why we are meeting we are devising a plan to eliminate the Kayubi Jinchuriki. The group began to grin and smile, all except for the emotionless Kakuzu the man of money and Itachi the clan killer. Won't the Kayubi die alongside him? I man this first Hokage doesn't even look that strong, asked a man with long blonde hair asked. Fool that guy can kill you in a blink of an eye. He was hailed as a god amongst us all. Even if the revival technique worked however it still seems to be Inkolmete so we have a chance to kill that brat before he does, Kakuzu responded venomously. Yes that is true but it would reform in a couple years and I am willing to take that risk due to the fact that he had displayed all this skill and promise if we were to give him the chance to train his skills he will most likely kill you all, the leader with his weird eyes claimed. The meeting was dismissed with them awaiting further information on the assassination on Serutobi Naruto. Itachi leaving the meeting met up with his partner Kisame outside a small hotel near the Land of Fire due to their bounty being there. What do you think of all this? Itachi you don't plan on betraying us for the fox do you? This conversation is futile Kisame, Kisame sighed and said, comrades. Such a loose word, you and I are examples of this. We killed our own comrades and family for our village and yet here we are working as mere mercenaries with our time running out. So why Itachi? Why do you keep fighting? I do it for my craves of battles and to obey my leader but what about you? Itachi kept walking forward but Kisame had stopped. Once he had turned around the famed Samahada sword was being pointed at his neck. Madara wants you dead, I figured, the Samahada cut Itachi's throat open leaving him on the floor. However that was what Kisame had thought, suddenly crowd began to sprout out of the body eventually leaving nothing. Kisame came over from his shock and scanned the area with a large grin on his face. Give me a battle to remember Itachi, it shall be done, a voice said sprouting from the ground. Itachi had come with a large black katana and clashed it with the large bandaged sword of Kisame. I didn't know you were a swordsman Itachi, you were full of surprises, he mused out chuckling with not a single hint of fear even when looking at the dead cold Sharingan of Itachi. The Uchiha brought up his blade to stop the Samaheda from getting close to him, if did manage to do just that it could shave down his chakra and that was something he couldn't afford due to his arsenal relying on a huge amount of it. Ducking under another blow Itachi then slashed his sword in the stomach of Kisame ripping his cloak and showing the slash on his abdomen. However it began healing, another pro of having the Samahata on your side. Kisame quickly healed and tried to grab Itachi by the throat but due to Itachi's superiority in tracking movements he swung his head back avoiding the hand. Then the Sharingan Wilder brought his leg up in quick speeds and smashed his foot into the Samahata but it did not budge instead it fed off his chakra. You should know by now Itachi that with this sword I am unbeatable. Nothing in this god forsaken world is unbeatable Kisame, everything and everyone has a weakness, Itachi said in a nonchalant voice, quickly he brought up his katana and once again clashed and pushed away the sword. And Itachi was right everything and everyone had a weakness. All he had to do was find it he then sealed his sword back in his palm and began to do fire style hand signs as did Kisame but with his supreme and amazing water style. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Style, Great Fireball Jutsu. Sweden. Daikoden no Jutsu, Water Style, Great Shark Bullet Technique. While Itachi let out an enormous fireball a giant water shark appeared and launched itself towards the fireball. Itachi knew this technique and his eyes widened. He needed to move now the shark began to absorb the fire and it got bigger. The Jutsu had absorbed his own fireball and used its chakra to gain even more power. The shark clashed in the ground and a vortex of water began to form destroying everything in its path eventually leaving a large crater. Kisame walked up to it with a smile on his face mission done. Or so he thought he had been put in a genjutsu, Kai, the Akatsuki member screamed, eventually out of the genjutsu the crater had still been there but in a completely different area. Suddenly in a blur of speed Itachi kicked him in the head sending him flying away destroying a tree and cracking the next one. W -wen. Kisame asked shocked while coughing up blood as the Samahada began to heal his cracked skull. Two Itachis popped up from a formation made by crows next to real Itachi as he spoke, when you began your hand signs and so did I, the moment you finished the sequence you had been caught in my genjutsu and made you direct your technique somewhere away from me. Itachi then ran with his two crow clones, 
As the two ran towards Kisame they then dispersed leaving only Crow's flock behind him. Once they did they once again formed into clones and shoved their katanas into Kisame leaving his lifeless body on its knees. However the main Itachi knew this was only a trick when he moved back and Kisame emerged from the ground leaving the so-called dead one in a puddle of water. The famed tailless tailed beast laughed. He had been made pretty good but the battle was far from over. You will die in this battle and I, I shall be the guardian of Konohagakure no Sato. Bring it Uchiha Itachi. A Megakure the cold rainy night filled aim. A single tower, the largest of the village. A pair who could destroy the elemental nations with barely any difficulty held a meeting. Is it done? A man staring into the rainy Omegakure? Indeed, I have told Kisame to assassinate Itachi and to bring me his eyes, another man behind him responded eventually walking out of the shadows it showed a man in a Akatsuki cloak with a dark orange mask on. This is a bad situation Madara. If Itachi manages to make it to the Kayubi vessel then it would take both of us to defeat them both, the man who had been staring away turned, it showed a pair of purple ringed eyes and spiky orange hair. Madara stayed quiet for a minute as if he was assessing his situation. And he would also agree, he was in a bad situation. Hashirama. A man even I could not beat. But worry not Nagato the Edo Tensai is incomplete and he is not at full strength. I suspect Naruto has gotten only as far as 50%. Nagato or his codename, Pawn started walking back into the darkness but not without saying his last words. Even at 50% that man is capable of killing every single one of our tools. Eventually Madara was left alone in thought gazing out the balcony that showed the gloomy village he had been staying in. Damn you Naruto, he said before swearing away in a weird technique he and his brother named together. Kamui. Naruto and Raiden had been camping in a remote area near Konohagakure. They were on their way back to the village. In fact they had completely forgotten about the retrieval of Tsunade but that was no matter since they had done something bigger. The assassination of Orochimaru the rogue Sanin, the S-ranked traitor of Konoha. They had stayed quiet the whole time. The words Raiden had spoken had gotten into Naruto's head. Is vengeance worth it, he began to wonder. I mean I could do it all. Now with the Edo Tensai's I have created I am free to rule the world as I so wish to. So why? Why am I so stuck up on Shisui and Itachi? Because that is not you Tokume. If what you told me about Itachi there is much more that meets the eye on that man. You're right Raiden. First we must do what I should have done a long time ago. Kill Danzo, the man who ended his own life going after mine. It was a battle like no other. Two shinobis hailed to be stronger than even their own perspective cage battled in a stalemate until one of them died. This is futile Kisame. You are out of a water source giving away the chance of powerful techniques. Give up and I will grant you the chance to live this through. Kisame got up slowly from a crater that had been created from a wind technique of Itachi's side. This is why I liked you Itachi, you showed mercy even in moments like this. If Madara had not ordered me to kill you I might have even sided with you. Kisame ran in incredible speeds clashing his still bandaged up Samahata with the katana of Itachi. The Uchiha suddenly pulled him forward with his free left hand and then did a front flip going over the rogue ninja of Kiri, however when he tried to drive a kanai into Kisame the kanai fell to the ground when Kisame drove his foot into the hand of the Uchiha. Leaving Itachi in a bad situation without his sword he suddenly fell to the ground from Kisame going on top of him and slamming his fist into Itachi sending him down with a huge boom. It's time to finish this, Kisame said. He began to suddenly fuse with his sword as he gained shark-like features and a tail along with gills, I've been saving this for you Itachi. Ignoring the shocked Itachi he screamed, Sweden. Samyodori no Jutsu. Water style, water prison shark dance Jutsu. The area filled with a large sphere of water growing bigger and bigger till it had surrounded the area. Itachi began to lose air slowly but he remained calm. Like always the man hailed to one day surpass Madara had one final thing. He had one final trump card he closed his eyes and he said in his mind, Mangeku Sharingan, he opened his eyes that looked like a four-pointed shuriken, they no longer looked like his old eyes. He had gained his new light to protect not only Sasuke but Naruto as well. Ga, Itachi screamed his battle cry. He wasn't going to let Kisame kill him. He had a new purpose. Itachi would protect Naruto and Sasuke even if it meant facing Madara Uchiha himself. Suzano Itachi, with all his might, summoned his warrior. 
a dark orange skeleton began to surround Itachi whilst Kisame could only look in shock as the water inside the skeleton began to evaporate. This isn't gonna end well the skeleton began to grow even larger until it grew a head and two arms. It then grew armor of the same color protecting it. He did it, he finally reached the next phase of the Suzano. The Suzano then pushed its arms forward and sideways dispersing the water technique like it was nothing. Damn it what is this? Kisame roared, he had never seen this before. Not even Madara had known about this since according to him he knew all of Itachi's abilities but he's clearly showing something they have all never seen before. Luckily for Kisame the humanoid armored warrior reverted back and dispersed. Itachi no longer had his cloak and instead showed his old Anbu outfit back from when he was in Konoha. This was his chance. Kisame ran as fast as he could at lightning speed to punch Itachi. However Itachi quickly put his fist up holding Kisame, he then put his other hand up and grabbed Kisame by his neck. He gazed into Kisame's eyes and they were no longer in the place they were before but in a red lighted plain field. W what is this? Kisame screamed while Itachi only smiled and picked up one of the many swords stuck to the grass. Simple really. In this place I control time. And I also control you, he said as he finished his last sentence. Roots came from the ground and wrapped around Kisame, locking him up. He could do nothing because he felt no chakra in his system. Itachi slowly walked back to Kisame and shoved his blade into the neck of Kisame. Even though there was no wound the pain was there. And it was unbearable, ah, Kisame raged with all he could. Itachi simply continued stabbing Kisame with an unreadable face. It was the worst 24 hours of his life. And back to the real world they were where only 3 seconds had passed. The shark fused Kisame Ban to revert back to normal and his sword had also fallen into some deep coma-like state and was no longer able to do what it would do. Rendering it near useless. I am done, he said out of nowhere causing Itachi to raise an eyebrow. He then sat up and then sat down again laying against a tree. I am done Itachi you can kill me now. Hehe he, I always wanted a death like this. A death where I fought someone stronger than me he said letting out a weak smile despite all the blood coming out of his. Itachi could only look him straight in the eye as he walked forward. The death of his old partner was near and he was going to be the one to do it for Konoha like always, Amaterasu, and with that Kisame was no longer alive. Grabbing his Akatsuki ring and his Samahata Itachi made his way towards Konoha now that he was going back there was one thing left to do before facing the Akatsuki killing Danzo the end. Now we will see you in the next video.